meeting of the Harwich Conservation Commission for October 2nd, 2019. The first item on the agenda is a request for termination of applicability for 334 Oak Street, a proposal for a new dwelling. Do we have a representative here tonight? There we go. Good evening, Dave McNevich, Coastal Engineering Company, here representing Kyle Douglas, who is actually also here this evening um, in this project. So I presume that you've made your site visits today. And, and okay. So the proposal is to um, construct this single family dwelling. There is a um, wetland in the um, southeast corner of the property, a vegetated, isolated vegetated wetland southeast corner of the property and uh, the proposal is to actually bring the access driveway into the proposed dwelling back here uh, via an easement via an easement on the adjacent property uh, which lot is owned by uh, Kyle's parents so um, the uh, the dwelling and driveway are outside really outside the uh, upper zone of the freshwater wetland so um, we don't see that there's any uh, impact or need for a notice of intent on this project, so I guess I would uh, open it up to any questions you might have. Okay, thank you. Hi, Amy. Hi. Any comments for us? Yeah, so this all came about a couple months ago when uh, John Schneibel from Coastal Engineering met with um, myself and the Douglases out on site. This property is a little unique. Um, the reason it's here in front of you as an RDA, you might be saying, well, it's outside the 100 foot buffer, why are we here? Well, um, there are two small wet or areas that, con that contain wetland vegetation and hydric soils on the property. Not hydric soils. You did test them, it was not hydric soils, okay. that's the reason. Okay. Yes. Well, I was just gonna say, it's, it's <laughs> clay-like soils with the vegetation is present. Um, one area is very small, um, less than the 3,000 square feet. One is about 3,000 square feet. Um, so I had asked them to depict that on the plans, which they have done. We went out to the site today, and um, I showed them the area that was in question, which was basically the area that's becoming Phragmites. And I'm sorry, it was my misunderstanding then. I thought John was um, saying that the soil, um, well, because of the characteristics of the soil is why you have the vegetation that's there. Regardless, I mean, my recommendation is still that they, that you recognize them as having that vegetation there, but that it, they're not significant and um, essentially that this project uh, as proposed is um, outside of the regular, outside of regulation. So, um, let me go back to this a little bit. You do have a vernal pool, a certified vernal pool on the property. They're outside the 100 foot buffer zone from that. They're outside the 300 foot buffer from the pond on the other side of the street. And the reason that's important is this is the Six Ponds Conservation District, uh, which is a special planning district in town, um, which affords a 300 foot buffer from ponds. Um, they did get a no-take letter from Natural Heritage saying this project's not going to have an adverse impact. And um, the reason that that wetland vegetation is there is because certain soils had been deposited there in the past um, that held moisture and that um, there was Phragmites seed and other invasive seed in there. Um, upon speaking with, the, uh, with Mr. Douglas, he made his intention that in the future, if they want to do any work um, to remove invasive vegetation, because there's a lot of knotweed on the property, right. that you know they'd follow our practices and meet with me and discuss about what type of application that that would would be. Um, but essentially, uh, so this is a request for determination. Um, maybe I'll let you speak a little bit more to the soil part of it. But I am recommending approval with a positive 2A, which means that the resource area boundaries are confirmed as accurate. We'll talk about a positive 6 um, being subject to the bylaw. We'll talk about the soils a little bit. Um, 
may not be a six, and then a negative four, which is not work, or work is not within an area subject to the act. But if you could tell me a little bit more about the soils, I thought because we had uh, sure, you have two the, of the three criteria. Yeah, the, um, one. there was some, um, and I talked to John okay. Schneibel about this uh, today, okay. and um, he did two, um, test pits there okay. uh, and uh, explorations those were included in the yeah. filing um, it is sandy soil there's some tight material on top but he he specifically noted that there were there was no water observed uh, no models and no hydric fields. and um, also looking at it I mean this there is standing water down here and the soil testing that we did um, for the septic system the estimated maximum high groundwater elevation is 34.5, and the, the grade up in this area is anywhere from 37.9 to uh, approximately uh, 38, 38 and a half. So we're uh, three and a half to four and a half feet above the estimated high groundwater. It's really not an environment to support a. This would not be a wetland in our judgment. Yep. Scratching that, uh, so scratching the positive <clears> six, <throat> I would um, request or suggest approval with a positive two A and a negative four. Thank you, Amy. Let's go around the table to see if we have any questions. Do you want? I have no questions. John. I have no questions. I was at the site today and I saw those areas and there is Fragmites in Pennsylvania sedge, but it looks very out of place and so it looked relatively dry to me. So I mm -hmm. technically I'm not sure. I don't have an opinion about what the right way to go, but it doesn't seem <laughs> kind of foggy to me. Mm -hmm. Jim? Yeah, I don't have any comments on it. No problem. No. I have no remarks. I agree with Amy. Uh, the only question I have, so Amy, if it if it doesn't have hydric soils, which in, in our analysis you suggested it might have been there, um, just the the existence of the Phragmites in the Pennsylvania sedge, is that? It's not enough. In order for a wetland to be a wetland, you have to have two out of three things. You so, have have, so we don't have so the two, don't, right? So you would you could declare that those two questionable areas are not. Wetlands. Yeah, right. Um, Which I think be would be part a, of your determination. Yeah, I think that would be the best yep. approach from my perspective, anyhow. Yeah. Um, and just take them off the map, so that it won't be any further issues. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was because of when we went out in the site. I said it's it's yeah. good to recognize them. I mean, there is it is a mm -hmm. characteristic, but there's no negative impact if um, I mean if those were to be. Were to be removed, it would be removing of invasives and non compatible soils anyway. Right. Okay. So, yes, you only have one of the three characteristics on the site, and you need two for it to be a wetland. So, that's why I scratched um, my initial thought of a positive six determination because I don't believe it's subject. So, it's not subject to the bylaw or the act, and the resource areas would be depicted as accurate. But you are right at the 100 foot buffer in one location, two locations. So, if it's not a wetland, yep. we still have to approve it with a positive 2A? You're basically what they're asking you to do is not, correct me if I'm wrong, you're not asking the commission to approve the house necessarily. You're asking us to approve the wetland mm -hmm. delineation on the site. So, we are voting to say that that um, Vernal Pool is the wetland on the site. And that what they're proposing to do is outside of jurisdictional area from it. Okay. Thank you. Do we have a motion on the table? I'll make a motion to approve uh, the request of Kyle Douglas at 334 Oak Street uh, with a positive 2A determination and a negative 4 determination. 
Second. Seconded by Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 None opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. for that oh. there might have been some people oh I'm sorry um, any any comments from the audience on this recently approved proposal <laughs> sorry um, if you I, don't I apologize but if you would like to come up you're still welcome to if you would just state in the microphone what your name is that would be great okay. uh, my name is Ellen Janikopoulos I live at 325 Oak Street and I was um, interested of course in the vernal pool in the area in the front yep. and I just want to make sure that that area would be not be touched and I think looking at the plan and I've seen it before you they're well outside that yes. so that is definitely a vernal pool yes okay good thank you thank you right. any others okay next up we have a request for termination of applicability for 165 Gorm Road, a proposal for additions to an existing dwelling. Thank you. Good evening. For the record, I'm Rick Judd, Moran Engineering. Uh, to your left, my right is Peter Barnard. Uh, will be the project manager for um, Cape Coastal. The project before you is twofold, actually threefold. Um, in the northwest corner of the property, the existing garage is going to have an expansion of a workshop, which uh, last week, I believe it was, received Zoning Board of uh, Appeals approval uh, for the setback conditions. Then at the main existing house, you're going to see a proposed sunroom, and then to the south of that, a proposed deck. The entire area uh, is within um, the uh, Zone AE Elevation 11. Forward before you uh, to present this project and take any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any comments for us tonight? Um, it's fairly straightforward. Um, they would like two small additions, one to the existing garage and one to the home. Um, the wetland resource area here is flood zone and it really is on the very edge of the flood zone um, the flood elevation is 11 your rough elevations on the site are between 10 and 11 so it's pretty close um, went out on the site um, and today and um, in this location it's completely fenced off I know when we usually talk about additions we talk about mitigation plantings I don't think in this case it's it's warranted. I don't think it's going to have a benefit for habitat. There's a lot of um, the owners have done lots of planting to begin with. It's beautiful um, out there. Um, the one thing we did and we like to stay consistent with is talking about chemical application on properties within our jurisdiction. So um, just keeping things natural, you know, not applying uh, fertilizer and um, pesticides, things like that. Um, in the future so I would just say we, we try to stay consistent with our new regulation it's all for trying to improve our water quality and whatnot here on the Cape so that would be my only recommendation for it and I would recommend a negative determination approval thank you Amy Carolyn any comments? no questions no John no comments no. Um, yeah I, I agree with Amy about the uh, staying consistent with the regulations that's, that's the only comment <clears throat> I'm all set. No remarks. No. Nope. Okay. Nope. None. Uh, any thoughts on on the uh, no fertilizer clause or, or condition? Uh, we can certainly discuss that with the homeowners. I, I would think that they would not be doing that there anyway, okay. given the given the area. So we certainly will discuss it with them and okay. you know, avoid that at all costs. Sure. Good. Yeah, it's good to bring it to their attention. Sure. All right. Well, thank you. Thank do, you. Do we have a motion on the table? Yeah, I'll make a, a motion to approve the notice of intent for 165 Gorham Road proposed additions um, with the condition that uh, the property will be in compliance with current uh, fertilizer and chemical 
use applications. Negative two. With a negative two. <laughs> yeah. Determination. I second it. Seconded by Stan. All those in favor say aye. 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 None opposed. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> I thought that was a notice of intent. I think I said. No worries. I, I got where you were going. <laughs> I, I again forgot to see if there's anything else. I got it. It's an RPA, so. Yeah. It should be good. And if we forget to ask for public comment at, after the commissioners have all spoken, please remind us to or not intentionally forgetting. Yeah, it's a long day. Yeah, it no can worries. be a long day. Okay, next up we have a notice of intent for 53 North Road, proposed for vegetation management and a new driveway. Dan O'Leary representing the Dudai family. Can you describe um, you know, the areas of the project? We're looking to remove invasive species and two locations and replace them with approved plantings which are listed on the planting schedule which is on your drawing. We're also looking to replace the asphalt driveway with a shell driveway trimmed in cobblestone with a cobble apron leading in to that driveway. On either side of the driveway at the present time there are two Pillars that are existing with a brick, we like to face those with a flex video. Any comments for us, Amy? Mm -hmm. um, so, when I met with Sean O'Leary uh, on the site, we talked. Um, it's a fairly large property, completely surrounded by wetlands. Um, wonderful spot on the river. And kind of spell out to the commission by area what you're intending to do. So they put this together. I think they did a you did a pretty good job of describing what you're doing where. I'm careful with the mic there. Um, so I don't really have. Um, I'd be happy to work with um, O'Leary Landscaping and the owner to make <coughs> sure everything. Um, we have a start work meeting to make sure everything gets done according to this plan. Um, it really is removal of invasives and replanting with natives. Um, I helped them come up with a list of plants that I thought would be applicable to this area that would do well. Um, so other than that, I really don't, and I was just going to mention too, um, while Dan is here, after we maybe talk about this, if you wanted to discuss the certificate of compliance for the other part of the, which is later on tonight. Um, while we have a, I don't know if you're comfortable with that, so you don't have to stay. No, um, that's fine. That'd be great. If it would just take a few minutes to discuss the request for certificate of compliance for the wall. Okay. Uh, but I, I recommend, we won't, I won't go there right now. Um, I would just recommend approval of this um, land management, vegetation management plan. And just to say that I did speak with Mr. Dudek and he, we saw it on site today. Um, he informed me he has not been using, um, chemicals on the property since spring, which is when the um, wall went in. And we, when we did see it on site today, I had seen it a few months ago when it still looked, but probably because it was taken care of in the spring. But um, it looked like it was naturalizing, like it, some stuff had not been used there. Um, I think the commissioners who were with me can echo, echo that. So that's a good thing. And uh, with that, I would recommend approval of this project. Thank you, Amy. We'll start with you again, Carolyn. Any comments? No questions. No comments. And looking at the lawn, it didn't. It looked like it hadn't been treated in a little while, anyway. But there were weeds coming up and things in the lawn, so that indicates no herbicides, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, Jim. That, no comment. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the plant things look like an improvement. So there is no plan per se of plantings, but this isn't a mitigation plan anyway, so whatever they do, we're just removing invasives and then whatever we're replacing with. Yeah, there's this. There's a plan. There's a plan. Again, I'm just reading it. 
Oh, okay. It was down below. Never mind. Mark, any comments? Nope. I don't agree with that. Okay. Ernie? Okay. Any comments from the audience? Okay. Do we have a motion to put forth? I'll make a motion to approve the notice come in 10 for 53 North Road. Seconded by Jim. <clears throat> Any further discussions or comments on conditions? I think we're all set. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And while we're here, can we do the certificate of compliance request for the same project, same property, real quick? Sure. Let us know the status. Yeah. So at the um, meeting that was, we had the work session we had last week, we discussed that this was for um, improvements, reinforcement to the wall that they have that's on the river, um, revetment. And that file, I gotta find it. And um, O'Leary Landscaping, um, you didn't do the work. It, it was you contracted out for that. The Judex did. <coughs> right, we just did the planting. Right. But um, so there was some concern. It didn't get voted upon at the meeting with conservation because, um, well, one, the wall, the top of the wall, instead of being kind of flush with the bank, was constructed vertically. Um, and then there was a little bit of concern that maybe it extended a little farther west. Yeah, towards the road. Um, towards the road. And so the commission didn't vote on it last time and just wanted to just chat about it tonight. Sure. Um, and your recommendation is to approve? I have to. Um, sorry. Give me one second here. My recommendation was last time to approve. Um, I was a little concerned about the western end around that big tree there and if it went a little bit farther than it should have. But it did, it was still on top of an existing rock wall there. So, I just, we do have what's no, called an existing, or you know, an as-built plan. Let me compare that, sorry. Amy, if I may, some, so Go some ahead. of the concerns we talked about today were, I think when we approved this initially, um, it was conditional upon certain size rocks being used. Um, to, to replace the revetment that was there already, um, as well as the height of the revetment that uh, was presented to us uh, for, for, for approval, which we ultimately went along with. Um, but the final product, I think, didn't comport with what was originally presented to us. So it went above and beyond. The, the rocks that were used were, I think Mark can probably talk better to this than I can. Um, but the, the mortar spacing was not this, what we originally expected to see. Uh, the size of the rocks was a lot smaller than we expected to see. It looked more ornamental, I think, than effective as far as uh, a revetment to try to prevent water damage and that sort of a thing. Um, and so that was what sort of raised the concerns, I think, for the most part when we visited today. Yep. Uh, something else, anything else, Mark, that I missed? Yes. The, uh, as the project was explained, in the uh, in the initial layout, my understanding was different than what it actually is. What I see there is a fieldstone wall that was laid in mortar directly on top of the wall. My understanding, and from what I take out of the narrative in the original plan, there was supposed to be some larger stones, one man, two man stones, pretty much in keeping with the size of what's there, laid on the top of the wall at the low end up near the dock. Mm -hmm. There was a high, high, high point and then it tapered down. My understanding was that was to be leveled off and then the planting was going to go in behind it. Um, to me, that's not what was described. 
it's a, it's a different different configuration totally. The wall goes down, it doesn't run level, it, it follows the contour, which in some cases isn't necessarily a bad idea, but there's no, no provision in that wall to expel any water that lands behind it. Um, to me, it, it's a recipe for failure. I might interject here that there was a different company that was involved in the presentation <coughs> to get this wall I understand. done. Yeah. And so we had nothing to do with the wall. All he did was put the plants behind it after the wall was done. Mm -hmm. I can certainly I figured that since you were representing the right, property. and I, I I can certainly talk to the Dudax if um, Amy tells me what to tell them. In addition to what you gentlemen just said, I'd be more than happy to do that. And with that being said, what he would have to do to be in compliance with your request. That's and I can speak with the um, I can speak with the contractor and the engineer on this. There was a little bit of back and forth email, which I, I copied. Leary landscaping on so that they knew okay. kind of what was going on. I copied Sean on it. All right. Um, but how does, I mean, well, the commission feel about. I was, I was concerned more with the addition to the top as far, rather than going further to the west. I think I had less concern with that. Mm -hmm. um, this is what Mark said. I, I expected really just a wall similar to what it was there before. This looked like that top two foot of wall was just like placed on top of the old wall. And I'm not an engineer by any means, but I mean that water was very hot mm -hmm. with the, where the, you know, the time of the month we are with the, the moon. And I can think over time that that wall, that top wall could just deteriorate over time and crumble. I will Again, express that to the Dudax since I have no knowledge of the, the project and that aspect of it. And again, give them that information. So we can still hold the request for a certificate of, or the certificate of compliance until we can get some more answers and direction on how we. Well, we had a had somebody here representing the property. I thought it was a good idea to. The plants were done well, though. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? I think so. Is that it, Brad? I think so. Yeah. Thank you for the Thank plan. You. Have a good Thank night. Thank you. Uh, and if anybody has just come in, there is a sign-in sheet in the back of the room. If you wouldn't mind signing in, and there's agendas back there too. Okay, next we're not going to do anything with your name. <laughs> next, we have a notice of intent um, for Four Shady Drive proposal for new dwelling appurtenances, and they have requested a withdrawal of the notice of intent. Mr. Chairman, they've re requested to withdraw without prejudice. Okay, so I think we need a motion to uh, grant that request, and I'll go ahead and make that motion that we approve the request for. Uh, withdrawal without prejudice for four short shady drive. So oh, second. Second. Seconded by Stan. All those in favor say aye. 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 None opposed. So that's done. Okay, next we have a notice of intent for 23 Owen Road. Request for a seasonal deck, a tiki bar, lockers, mitigation planning, and also discussion on chemical applications on the property. David McNevich, Coastal Engineering Company, Andrew Singer, uh, and Bill Gantert from Witchmere. Mm -hmm. um, we were last in probably about a month ago now uh, because the last meeting we have a quorum for. And uh, we had reached uh, an agreement that the mitigation ratio would be increased to six to one and that is what this plan represents the uh, now going to be approximately 12,100 square feet of mitigation planting um, and uh, 
the uh, the area on the east side closest to Witchmere Harbor Inlet. Um, there was a lot of discussion about the configuration of that, and we've revised this plan, I think, to meet what we had discussed at the last hearing in terms of being more um, out, not linear, parallel with the channel, but uh, projecting out into the beach area. And so really that's what the plan reflects in front of you. Thank you. Amy, do you have comments on this? Mm -hmm. So um, first about the plantings, um, thank you. I think it's um, in an area, more in an area that I had um, pictured that the plantings um, would be, or that basically the no-touch area would be. Um, still, the fence is still proposed on both east and west sides. With plantings, I don't think, um, one, I think the plantings, beach grass will act to capture sand anyways, and I do see it as a additional structure that um, maybe we shouldn't allow on the coastal beach. Um, the extensions of the of the fencing seaward and but they are proposing um, just over 12,000 square feet of mitigation for the 2,000 square feet of hardscape which was the tiki uh, which was the seasonal deck um, and tiki bar with storage lockers the storage lockers would be um, permanent correct not seasonal correct. Um, six to one mitigation so I, I do agree with the the areas that you're proposing that area to be. I do think that the idea of just symbolically fencing those areas off and letting some things regrow and then supplementally planting, um, depending on what comes back, might be a good um, method for this one. Um, and then, so Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program contacted both um, yourselves and, and us and the commission has that letter in there so the conditions would have to be followed. In addition, I don't know if this was in there. I had um, Amy Coleman from NHESP contacted me and mentioned that she doesn't recommend raking seaward of the proposed mitigation area. So between the edge of that and the water line. Pretty much high water anyway. Right, right. So. You don't go below. Right, right. But if there was like a strip that it should be left to naturalize and that's to let, let, let the plovers and other shorebirds have straight access essentially to the water and create habitat. Um, the commission wanted me to look into the beach cleaning permit, which we can talk about as, as, as well. But um, I had reached out because I didn't have copies of things, or at least they weren't where they were supposed to be. <laughs> and Mr. Ganshirt sent me um, enough information where I could actually locate that file so we can talk about the beach cleaning process project maybe when we're finished discussion with this the tiki bar um, so I guess in, and then we can also while you're here what the update is with where you're at with um, potentially Wilkinson ecological design about the rest of um, what's going on on that property that the commission was concerned about. But for the time being, I would recommend approval, letting them do a seasonal um, walkway, or seasonal, where is it? Seasonal deck with seating and tiki bar with the permanent storage lockers, provided that they do this mitigation as presented. And then we can talk about the other things. Thank you, Amy. Carol, do you want to start? I'm going to abstain. Oh, that's right. Okay. John. Uh, I just have a couple questions. One is that you just said that the seaward end of the planting area is pretty much at I mean, high water, but looking at the plan that you submitted, it's like 50 feet away from the high water. We're okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. No, we won't. We don't need to. Just rate. down in here. And that's just to right. clarify, the NH, the, the letter said proscribed any cleaning seaward of the planting, right? That's not right. an option. Right. Right. Well, so they regulatory, they make recommendations to us, and we would incorporate them in the orders of conditions. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I would support that. Yeah. Um, 
And the other question you were asking is about the the extension of the fencing. Unless there's some compelling argument for why it should be extended, I that's, would. No, there is, that's, that was that's here. We were okay. here and we put that in to build the dune, but if that's if that's not needed, then. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, on both sides, the, the there is a fence there, and it, it has given some shape there that the dune has formed over it. And that's, as Bill just said, we were looking to sort of continue building the dune that way, but it's not essential. Okay. Thank you. All set. Thank you. Jim? All right, well, yeah, I agree with uh, John and Amy's comments, so I think we can move forward with that. Almost so. Okay. <clears throat> no remarks. Uh, just one comment on the uh, storage locker. They wouldn't come off season like the deck would. You yeah, leave we them on the beach. On typically. Yep. And that kind of positions everything. Yep. Are they anchored or are they just? Yeah, they're kind of anchored. Yeah, okay. All right, so I think we're going to rule on that notice of intent tonight, and then we'll have discussion on the beach plan and the, the chemical use afterwards. Mm -hmm. So if somebody would like to make a motion on the notice of intent, we can address that. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the notice of intent for 23 Snow End Road. Uh, with the conditions, with the mitigation plantings as planned and the conditions uh, as laid out in the NHESP letter. And, the, and I guess removing the uh, snow fencing. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Second. Under discussion, I should ask if anyone from the audience has any comments. Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 One abstention, none opposed. Thank you. Okay. Um, do you want to transition into the... Um, well, let, yeah, let's ask for an update on updates. your investigation on reducing your chemical load, fertilizing load. Start with that. Sure, I can address that. Um, I spoke with uh, Mike Charles this afternoon who's is at Wichmer as well with Bill. Um, Seth Wilson, as we told you, had, was brought on um, just, you know, like within days when we last met with you. Uh, he, they're still in the process of that, and they'll be coming forward with a plan, plan which would show a, you know, uh, a longer-term uh, reduction or addressing the issue of the fertilizer management. We'll be bringing that in as soon as Seth has something uh, ready to go. Okay. Um, otherwise, that notice of intent was approved. For the rebuild, um, yeah. It, would that activity begin before this plan's back before us? You mean the rebuild of the beach club? No. Yeah. No. no, and actually we're going to be ultimately coming. Can I ask a question? You, you sure. mentioned long-term reduction. What, what does that mean? I, I don't understand that. Uh, it was my understanding, and Amy might be able to address this, um, I guess what, uh, I don't know if Mike was talking to you or maybe it was with Seth. Um, as they're putting together whatever this plan is, they'll be doing it so you don't shock the system. They will be, and I'm not an expert on this, but they'll be, uh, Seth will be coming up with a long-term plan which would, in discussion with you, get to where everyone wants to be. It just, I, I guess, guess my I guess I'm not though. necessarily comfortable with having such a, an obtuse sort of target date for this. A long-term plan just isn't. Yeah, it's just I'm not comfortable with that. Given the proximity of this this particular land to waterways, I mean it's a major contributor to um, to the nitrogen load in the system and, and the water coming in and out of, of Winchmere Harbor and everything else. Um, and I don't think our intent for any of these um, orders of conditions that we've approved take into account any sort of a long-term plan. I think we, we, our expectation is when we grant an order of conditions that um, f the fertilization stops. So the way that the order, the conditions read in this, in this case um, that the commission voted on was that, um, that the chemical treatment essentially, um, that the chemical treatment cease or they provide a suitable 
alternative to the commission that needs to be approved. So that was the. And that's what we'll be coming back to you with whatever the, Seth comes up with, and we'll have that discussion. And I can't tell you what. I, I, we when, don't know what it'll be, be, but it's going to be that. When will he come back with his recommendation or his plan? There isn't a date set. Yeah, I don't have. We don't have a firm well, date. I, mean, I think it would be good to have an update with yeah, him. Yeah, I mean, this is just. It so. just seems like we're, we're avoiding the issue at. here. Well, also the project is, a, is not going forward. This is a significant concern for us. Uh, Understand absolutely. that this yeah. will be in place before the project starts. Yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted you to know that we will be coming back to you. That the, what you you know we're going to need an amendment of what was approved before. So it's going to be back before you before anything takes place, and you'll be looking at that condition. So we will be here. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So, beach yep. maintenance plan. So the commission had asked at a couple of the past meetings about um, um, a beach maintenance raking permit that you had, and um, so Bill provided me with a letter that was sent to our office in 2015. Um, I found the file. The file was from 1996. So, in our archives. Um, and I think it was like recorded, it was recorded under Winchmere Shores and not Winchmere Harbor Club. It was hard to find. Yeah, Winchmere so, Shores is the condo name, so it yeah, was got yeah. put under that. So, I just got. So, you do have, and it's, it's actually kind of vague, and I did put it in um, your Dropbox. I've, did I put the orders of conditions there, the old orders, in Dropbox? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they were, well, that was a certificate of compliance in 20, 2009. The actual orders of conditions were back in two. I don't think. So the orders, oh, and the, well, the certificate of compliance was in, Yes, sorry. <laughs> this was in 90, no, 2009. With the ongoing condition, so this was issued in 2009. Um, ongoing conditions to include seasonal deployment of the at grade walkway beach and out of season deployment of s snow fencing as conditioned in conditions eight and nine. Um, which was fairly, in terms of the beach cleaning, it was fairly vague then what regulations, like what standards you had to find when, or apply to when doing beach cleaning. So we can chat about now. Um, now we do have beach cleaning regulations that would allow you to clean the beaches, but there's just a couple more standards now to comply with than maybe back then. We can put it on for a discussion item for another meeting too for yeah. this. So it sounds like we probably should request an updated plan? Yeah, maybe I could chat with Bill and we can see what you're doing and how it um, fits or if there's any little tweaks that need to be made um, to comply. Right online in our regular, in our wetland protection regulations, there's a whole section now on beach groom cleaning. Mm -hmm. So essentially they do have a permit to allow for grooming of the beach, but the permit itself back in the day was kind of vague as to what exactly that meant. Mm -hmm. And no expiration? That, yeah, I mean it does say that was an ongoing condition of assertive compliance, which was before I think any of us were here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, typically we do it once a week and we go, we stay above high water. Yeah. So we can, if you want to take a look at our regulations, or I can email them to you. Please. And we can try to get the practices in line. Mm -hmm. Does that sound okay? Okay. Any comments on this, from the commissioners? Abstaining. John. No. Um, well, not yeah, not particularly. It seems like they have a permit for it. That's uh, certainly a manicured situation. Yeah. Um, where you know, it'll be gaining some 
habitat to the, and the mitigation areas, which is good for the, the wildlife. And um, I think recently we've been giving permits for a set time period, right? We haven't had them in. I will check. I don't. I, I have the regulations in my buggy here, yeah, but I, I think three uh, three years, maybe five years, is what we've been doing. Yeah, this is a bit of an, an odd one. Um, we don't commonly grant things in perpetuity, but it is here. So. There's been cleaning yeah. before. There was the Wetlands Protection right. Act, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. So yeah. we understand so. that, but it might be helpful to review your practices and I understand. get things up to date. Stan, no, Mark. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Well, we'll see you soon. Yep. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have a notice of intent for 10 Chase Street, proposal for a pier ramp float and vista pruning. It's really fine. Um, this area. It's never been. I don't know, the, the murky one. Do you want me to check the other room real quick for you? Or did you? I can check. Sorry for that. Um, so for the record, I am Mark Burgess of <coughs> Girlfriend Consulting, representing the Thals. The first hearing that we had, um, Barbara Thal was here, and now we uh, have the presence of Aaron Thal yeah, next to me. Um, I do want to start out with one thing. Last week, the, um, I, I don't know if it was Carolyn or... Uh, you guys mentioned uh, we were dealing with some other issues, and you mentioned that you were glad that I was handling those. Was that you, Carolyn, that said that or not? But okay. it was a sincere compliment that kind of stopped me in my tracks. 422 Main Street. Oh, okay. the, some of the violations, I think you mentioned. It's okay. nice to have somebody on mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so I wanted to say. Have you guys say that? Okay, back to uh, current events. Um, okay, so at the last hearing, there were some uh, concerns that were brought up on items uh, of and regards to the project. And uh, we were also were asked to look into an elevated walkway type of a project just for kayak access. And I think I, sent, I might have sent you guys, or I sent Amy a, a sketch of a plan or something, or pictures even, of that type of thing. but. If I did, 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 I didn't end up sending it because you wanted to go back to yeah. the original plan. So right. I didn't end up. I want to confuse things. Okay. Um, at any rate, we looked at that option, and the, what the Thals felt was that, and I'm paraphrasing, but what they felt was that for the amount of effort it takes to permit this kind of a structure, that uh, for either current or future use, they didn't want to go through the trouble and not have what they really want, and um, so it didn't seem a cost benefit. It didn't seem worth it to go for that when we'd have to either change it in the future or, or something. So, um, so we, what we did instead was focus on the comments that resulted from the review of the project and uh, see ways that we could address it. And uh, 
and uh, most of those are addressed in a letter that I sent on September 11th and I'll just quickly sum them up for anybody in the audience. Um, for the first time ever, the dock was raised up by one foot to provide six feet of clearance over the marsh. This is the new suggested one and a half clearance from Mass uh, Division Marine Fisheries. Um, not a requirement by any bylaw that I know of, uh, but the Thals are willing to do that uh, to, make, to make the dock uh, improve the clearance and uh, with potential impacts uh, to reduce them even further. Um, required a six inch step on the landward side, obviously, because you're going up, and a step down um, at the landward side for the timber at grade steps. So then we looked into providing more clearance around the float, and rather than go out further, which we may have been able to do, but it would have meant going back to waterways, we said, well, we'll just shorten the side, the, the landward side of the float. So now there's three feet of clearance at the at mean low water on the landward side, and you still have the remaining 5.2 feet on the seaward side. So there's lots of water here. There's more water here now than probably any project I've permitted in, in, in years. Um, the ramp was extended two feet, of course, to get out to the new edge of the, of the ramp. And then uh, there was a concern that the kayak rack was still on the ground and located in the resource area, so we pulled it out of there and re relocated it to the sides of the dock, pretty, uh, which is pretty standard. And then um, there, was, there was a lot of discussion about shellfish and the mitigation and that the site itself doesn't get the benefit of this mitigation. You know, in normal practices, the Director of Natural Resources would seed areas in the town in general that, that people can use. Um, so we, uh, we talked with the Thals and I talked with Heinz and he wrote a letter, I believe, that you have that says that a portion of the, of the shellfish mitigation can go directly on this site and he would be happy to do that. Um, the Thals wanted to make sure that the shellfish population here stays, you know, healthy and happy and um, are, they had offered to do the on-site mitigation, so that's the way it would happen. And there's so much extra mitigation that uh, Heinz didn't feel that, they'd had, that they had to add, like another bushel or something like that. There was plenty to go around. He would just designate a, a, a certain amount of it for this site. Um, so you'll get on, direct on-site mitigation here. And, um, I, and I added notes in the plan. To, about the shellfish mitigation and the kayak racks. And then, um, so then the, the next submittal on here is, is, you've seen this before, so it was just a calculation of shellfish densities. Uh, the subjects come up in the past, so I thought, well, I'll write it out and see what it, see what it comes out to. So the data is there. Um, you can see that the ratios, uh, this particular project compared with, with others in town um, the, the shellfish density is quite a bit less by, a, by sometimes a factor of four, four to five. So there's, there's not that, um, the shellfish density here is quite, quite a lot less. Um, and um, we had talked about <clears throat> this particular property, you know, the Thals are very environmentally conscientious. They have like a 200 foot no mow zone that they instilled on themselves. They installed a, a um, wild, wildflower, wildflower meadow on their own, I mean, with Amy's permission, of course. These are all things that they wanted to do to improve the property. Um, and I think that's a, a, that goes a long way towards why they're willing to do all this, all, all the, some of these extra improvements to the dock, even though they're not required by, by any bylaw. I think it demonstrates just how far they're willing to go. One, to make this happen, and two, to make everybody else have a, a good satisfaction that they're going to be good stewards of this property and remain being good stewards of the property. I think with that, um, Amy, you can take over. Thank you. It's my turn, yeah. Um, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, let me get my thoughts straight here. <coughs> So they took into consideration the division um, or fish and wildlife's recommendation to go higher with the dock, and the dock um, spans the salt marsh. There's no pilings technically in the actual salt marsh. It spans it, and it's going to be six feet high above the above the um, at a minimum. 
which would allow for more light penetration and it's where you, where you don't have very much height between decking or even cross braces and um, salt marsh grass that you see the shading effects of salt marsh more. So I think that will um, alleviate that concern. So I don't see this project as having an adverse impact to salt marsh if it is constructed as presented with the monopile design that spans the marsh at six feet high. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, there's actually um, seaward of the marsh, there's going to be two monopiles and then four pipe piles that hold the float. Um, yeah, there's two, you need two piles at the end to stabilize the end of the pier and then you have the seasonal pipe piles that hold right. the float. Right, so those would be... <laughs> For the float, there's four. The float, yep. And then two at the... Um, two at the very the end. end of the pier. Right. Okay. Um, so the monopile design minimizes disturbance in um, the benthic environment. The shellfish, uh, yes, it is in a map town and state mapped shellfish area, the densities are, we don't really know what significant is, but I would say kind of in the moderate range for us, not too hot, not as high as we've seen, but not as low. So when it comes to that, and it's in that habitat, one, we do have, it was reviewed by waterways and natural resources. They both approved of this project as not having a hindrance to navigation or that it wouldn't have a lasting impact to shellfish habitat. The regulation for working in shellfish habitat is to bring back to production within one year and with mitigation. And what they found there in, in moderate numbers, and it was cohogs, I think if it was to be reseeded with those species as proposed, I, th I don't think it would have, um, I don't know if we could say it would have a lasting negative impact. Um, I do see this as an opportunity, similar to we've done in another case recently, for monitoring after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, there's just really, it's, it's kind of surprising, there's not data out there from really any towns, just in this state, but period, about impacts that water dependent structures might have, may or may not have, positive or negative, because there's arguments on both sides that they might actually have a positive impact on certain shellfish species. But there's just really not that hard data. Um, so I would recommend, in general, maybe the commission talk about making a change to its regulations and that when, when we, if we do approve docs, that we put this monitoring clause um, or conditions on that. But um, in this instance, I would recommend approval under the bylaw and the act. Thank you, Amy. Let's go around the table and see what kind of comments we have. I don't start? have any comments. Okay. John? Uh, I have no comments at the moment. Mm -hmm. Jim? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I agree that the uh, regulations should be reviewed. I think I, I'm, I don't think, I think we're all maybe tired of talking about the shellfish thing, but I'm going to continue to vote with the regulation that says there shall be uh, no docks and map shellfish habitat. So. Stan? I, I have one question regarding the shellfish sur surveys, not just this one in general. Okay. But the various ones that we've done, are they consistent? Are they done at the same time of the year? You know, so is there, there could be other factors as to what's being found mm -hmm. if surveys are being done, you know, uh, say in the summer versus the spring versus whatever, if, if there's been commercial fishing or uh, shell fishing done at the at the times that right after or before they're done. Yep. And I don't know the answer, but it's just more of a question in terms of when we do, do look at a survey, if, if we're really comparing apples to oranges here. This one was done in the warmer weather. I can't remember the dates on the report, I, which I have in the file, but do you know? Uh, um, I can find it for you. But, I but can find the question too, is, yeah. I mean, we're comparing all these yes. different surveys, and I that I do work in, I don't know that they require the surveys to be done at the same time, but 
that you're absolutely right. That would that would remove one potential variable from the data, you know. So it makes perfect sense to do that. I think the winters, from what I know, the winters a bad time, right? Because they go deeper in the winter. Is that soft shell clam? Yes. Yeah. But not for the other species. The others, the others just hang no matter what. Oysters certainly do. Okay. Whole hogs actively feed. Um. So yes, I, I don't see. I, I totally agree with you. I think, I think you want to remove as many variables as you can because that makes the data more consistent. And then having said that here, this particular project would be augmented, so one would hope that the densities would increase, and you wouldn't know, but you wouldn't know if it was directly a direct result of the seeding. You can assume that, but we really wouldn't know that. But I would anticipate that, um, depending on where it's seeded, that you should be able to double what's out here. You know, and then the monitoring portion of it, um, I didn't mention that, but the thaws are open to doing that now as a special condition, and, and I think that's an added benefit. If we're going to do the mit on-site mitigation, then you've got some data to help moving forward, you know, for everybody. Um, I did forget to mention the snug. <laughs> if you remember the, the outbuilding that's um, kind of like an artist shack or, or something like that, uh, not a tool shed or no fuel stored or anything like that. And then Vista pruning was part of it as well. I, I forgot to mention that. I have nothing else. Okay, thanks. Mark, <coughs> any comments? I have no comments. Ernie? Um, two comments. One, I, Stan, I, I appreciate your bringing that up because I think it would be germane to our decision as to um, a comparison against, say, Strandway and when that survey was done versus this one because they're right next to each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the proximity is you can, you can see one from the other. Um, so I think it would be germane to our decision as to, or pertinent to our decision as to whether or not um, these were done at different times of year. The um, initial, sorry, if I may, um, the initial survey mm -hmm. was done. I think in the future we should stipulate seasonality to it. I don't know when that one was done. This one was done March 11th. Uh, you don't know when uh, Strandway was done? Not a, I don't have it with me. So I don't know when the, that initial survey was completed. Yeah, do you happen to know, Mark? I don't, I don't remember. I know I was out there when I did it, and I don't think I was wearing a heavy coat. Mm. That's, that's about okay. all I can well, remember. It's a good determiner, I think. <laughs> yeah. could, so it could have been scientific fall. Scientific way to look at it. <laughs> it could have been fall or it could have been spring, but it, it, yeah. I, I don't remember. Yeah, the only it. other comment I have on your plan, it, it shows a uh, bench of some sort on the uh, uh, walkway, this two by eight down toward the end, which would increase the dimension, the uh, width of the walkway more than the four feet that we would allow. Yeah, that's come up in conversation before. Um, but it's it, still there. Well, because no one's ever, no one's ever, um, no one's ever before. So it was been, it's been discussed and we talked about if that was the thing that, that put you over the edge that we'd happily remove it. Yeah. Um, it well, even at that six foot width though, it still is eight feet off the ground. So it, uh, no, 10 Understood. feet. Understood, but our, our, our regulations require a four foot width, right? Maximum four feet width. So, I mean, that. And usually bench. people hang, put pegs on the side of the dock and hang them off the dock um, and not have a bench or something. It's usually, yeah. but so, the bench. So yes. that would have to come out. We've, we've asked people okay. to do that. Um, if, like, like I said, if that's, um, if you would, uh, if you would approve the project based on the plan that says to remove the bench, I'd certainly get that to you right away. Um, I understand. I, I get it. Um, we've always talked about it, but we've never done anything about it. Yeah, it's, it hasn't usually been the at the crux of a, either an approval or a denial. We've noted them before. We have noted it. Yeah, that they it's eliminated. Right. So, so well, a lot of docks too. They don't you know, get quite as high off the ground as this one. Um, so the reason we don't allow wider is for shading purposes. Yeah. Um, well, this being Interestingly enough, bench, then it, it qualifies for the general license category. So it's, it, otherwise you have to do simplified or, or yeah. the full 30 year one. But that's a criteria in the general license. Hmm. For, and they do consider the bench to be part of the width, because I know from experience. Right. But with that, I, have I just want to go back to add one other comment. It's hmm. really basically what Jim said, and you've said this many a times. In other meetings, maybe you know the bylaw needs to be changed, and that's a possibility. But it hasn't been changed, so until it, 
that is the bylaw. I know it is a it is a bylaw. There's a variance. There's a, a lengthy variance. Um, the well, I, what is it like? Eleven pages. Yeah, I know. The idea behind the variance, if there's no alternatives, but you're providing mitigation against the concern, you, that you should be able to grant the variance. That's the, the long and short of it, I guess. Nothing else. Okay, thank you. I'm going to spend just a minute talking about the um, shellfish densities reported for on September 11, 2019. Mm -hmm. And so you, you do report on five properties that had surveys done. Three of these led to approved docks. And it is interesting. It brings up Stan's point on how, um, you know, the standardization of practices in, in data collection. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because you can see a place like 55 Snow Inn has a higher ratio of shellfish to plots than this present project. And that's a spot that is really has very few shellfish, yeah, it was uh, almost none. Yeah. And it's, it's a place where people can fish, shellfish that people don't because there's just the densities won't allow it. So if I look at these five places and I think about where people do shellfish, um, Turner a little bit, um, 19 Nons Road, no, not really anything occurring there and that had a very low ratio. Um, Novak property a little bit, and I think this 10 Chains Road property is a place that has both quahog and oyster harvesting occurring. So it has a pretty low ratio. But to my eye, it has as abundant a shellfish as these other four properties. So to me, it fits into what I think our bylaw is attempting to protect. And so it also speaks to, I think, the, the randomness of these surveys. Sometimes they can really catch them, sometimes they can't. I think this survey did not encounter any oysters. Is that correct? Um, <clears throat> again, I have to have it in front of me, but if it was 30, I don't know, 33, I think, out of 110 plots, what did I say? 30 cohogs, I think, and it, it just missed one oysters. oyster. <clears throat> there was none? One. One, yeah, but it, it is a spot where oysters do fairly well. So I, I think it's, it's just one of those things, and we could do a better job with, I think, having criteria for judging what significant shellfish habitat is. So it's a difficult project in that way. And I also appreciate the changes that you brought to the proposal to, to try to make it a, a, um, a more friendly proposal for our regulations. But I, I do think that there was some strong intent with our regulations when this was put in to have no new structures within 50 feet of a shellfish area. And I do think commissions before us um, for many years adhere to that, and you, you were not seeing these type of proposals approved. And so it's fairly recently that we've been approving them under variances, but for a long period of time, um, I think commissions really upheld that. So I, I tend to take that provision, number eight, of our water dependent structures very seriously, as well as number seven, which is to avoid impacts to salt marsh. I think this proposal minimizes impacts, um, but may not eliminate impacts. So those are my comments. Any, any comments from the audience? If I may, <clears throat> if I may, Brad, mm -hmm. the performance standard isn't, isn't to eliminate impacts. It's no significant negative impact. Mm -hmm. So if the impacts are, are minimum and temporary, then it's certainly allowable under the bylaw. But, if but salt marsh? Any of it. It's no significant impact is the performance standard. If it was an ACEC, then it has no negative impact. But in a regular, what I call a regular resource area, the performance standard that we have to adhere to is no significant negative impact. So for that the, allows some negative impact. For the Wellness Protection Act. Yeah. Right. For the HRH regulations, how is that worded? I don't think we have performance standards. I don't think it says. Uh, yeah, right. no, it, it doesn't. So, yeah, we're, we're looking at the two sets of regulations. And, um, and I think that you're correct with the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, it's up to us to interpret what's significant. If, but if there's no performance standard in your local, in your local act, well, how do you? Number eight you? says no new structure, no structures shall be located. So that, that's the interpretation that I've made. And I, I agree it's, it's difficult because um, a variance can be allowed. Mm -hmm. But I, I look at this and I think the intent was to avoid impacts in important areas for certain resources. And, but there are no important areas. Every single area in town is a town designated shellfish area, except for those two plots on Witchmere Harbor. Mm -hmm. Somebody, whoever did that years ago, just blanketed the whole town. There is no 
there's, you know, those, those two plots in, in Wichmer are the only ones that I'm aware of that aren't in a shellfish habitat. So it, it's, it's almost like. Our decisions, and, and to me, um, there's significant shellfish in that area. So, yeah, but we don't really. Based on the survey? Yes. And based on my knowledge of the area as well, my personal knowledge of the area. So it, it goes. The shell fishermen? Yes. Yep. Um, and just being around the river for a long time, that was my comparison the five projects there, you know, relatively to those. I think this one had a very low ratio. Yet its abundance, I think, exceeds most of the other areas. So How does it do but that? What, what, what? Is there data that supports that? The only data we have is a survey. Right. Right. So you, that's your opinion. Right. That's. I mean, we're going by. We're taking the data and coming up with a conclusion based on the data. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> if if you have a different opinion that the area is a, a, a better habitat, but we don't have any data to. To show that, so on a, all we can do is go by the data. Right. I struggle, I struggle with that, Brad. Well, I think you struggle because we don't have a hard threshold or a criteria to say this is significant and this isn't. So I understand that. It, do, it does say in our regulations uh, shall not have any adverse impact on the productivity of a salt marsh. Is our our I'm local? Sorry, can you speak up? <coughs> on our on our local regulations, it reads. Uh, shall not destroy any portion of the salt marsh or its substratum, nor have any adverse impact on the productivity of the salt marsh. So mm -hmm. it's not, say, significant, it says any. That's for your local? Yes. Okay. Yep. So again, the bylaws, the guidelines, all the criteria that we have to design projects in these sensitive areas, this project follows those. So it, it's difficult for me, as a designer, Come up with these designs that meet that meet all the performance standards, and, and it's only by hmm, I'm going to use the word opinion, but you know what I mean. It's only by opinion that the project is going to have negative impacts. We've shown in other projects that there's more shellfish around pilings and floats. So while you may have an opinion or a judgment that that says that you think that this project will have adverse impacts, there's no data to support it. And the data and the regulations that we have support that the project is designed in accordance with the regulations to minimize or eliminate impacts. If there was a, if the one and a half to one ratio was a hard bylaw, we, you know, we would make it one and a half to one. It isn't, but we're offering to do it. Uh, the the, the bylaw simply it. says there shall be no new structures. That that's the bylaw. That one, yes. But for 12 projects, that that has been had a variance against it for, for various reasons. Uh, I think four of them were mine. So I get it. I, 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 I get it as far as the bylaws there, you want to stick to it. But I think it's been varied. It's had a variance uh, allowed against it for so long now that I think the door has swung the other way. Uh, I think it's very difficult to, and at this point, to, to go backwards. I think it's fairly recent. I, I honestly don't believe that... Uh, you know, it's a fairly recent period at which the commission has chosen to um, vote that way. Yeah, my the data that I gave you for other projects went back as far. I think it's in this one. It's in the variance actually. It goes back to 2003 when the bylaw was implemented. So since 2003, there's been a dozen new docks, and all of them are in shellfish areas. I just I'd like to make a couple of comments. One is that. I don't buy the business as usual argument. I mean, that's Mark. That's basically your argument, and I don't think anything about the environment and our environmental concerns can be addressed in the context of trying to do business as usual. I don't think that's a. I don't accept that argument personally, and I would not vote based on that argument. I don't think we can do business as usual. I don't think we can say that just because we approve a couple of docks previously that it's a good idea in any way to do it again for reasons that have been discussed here. So I won't vote on that basis. And I'd like to make sort of a general comment about the shellfish issue. And I don't, I'm not a shellfish expert. I don't know anything about it. 
but it strikes me that what we have here is a problem of statistics. And when you go out and count things in the field and try to draw conclusions from one example of a count, you're making, you're doing some statistical decision making. And without any idea, which it appears we have no idea about the validity of the statistics, it's very difficult to draw any conclusions. So I also don't think that you can say that just because in one instance, partly for the reasons that Stan was stating, that it's a seasonal thing and it may even vary from day to day because of the weather conditions, I don't know. But without some firm statistical basis, I don't buy the idea that you can draw much of any conclusion from one day of going out and counting shellfish in, a plot, in plots like this. And so we're stuck with, um, with the problem of trying to follow your argument that you counted so many shellfish there and it wa they weren't that many and you're making a statistical argument without much of a basis or um, going with the local knowledge from someone who's done shell fishing in the area for years. So we're stuck with that, with that conundrum of trying to deal with lousy statistics and draw a conclusion or try to base our decision on, on local knowledge. And I'm more inclined to base my decision on the local knowledge as opposed to some um, half-baked statistical which is very incomplete. Well, that makes it tough for us because all we have is the. Well, I, I don't know. all we have. <laughs> I, I won't go as far as to you know, agree with you because I think the stats are important. I think the, our regulations, and, and don't, you know, don't trust me as knowing something locally. I, I would go with our regulations first and foremost. And, um, so my opinion will be guided by what I know in the area, but I think our regulations are what should guide us. And I do think stats, you know, is a factor, and I also think where they start their grid is a factor. In the harbor project we're going to talk about next, they, they miss soft shell clams with the first survey completely, and it's by where they elected to begin the survey. So the placement of the grid is really important, and, I, and to my eye, that varies times, and that can affect your catchability. In this case, they got one oyster. Is that the placement of the grid where it started? Because it seemed to miss that intertidal spot where oysters would be found. So. I think that might speak to some of your concerns, is, is how standardized are these surveys and the results. My basic point is, do you really have enough data from going out there one day and, and collecting samples on a grid, counting them? Is that enough data to draw any valid conclusions? That's my question. And I don't really know the answer. I'm not uh, a subject expert, so I don't know. I'd love it if someone could tell me that there's some statistical basis for drawing conclusions from a data set like that. But I haven't heard anyone say that. Yeah. I think you have to look at the spe individual species and their, their densities by species, grid pattern to see if it was sufficient to cover all the intertidal and subtidal habitat next to the dock footprint. Amy, do you have a comment? We're the ones who tell them they, ha they have to do these shellfish surveys. Yeah. So, so, if, right. so it, we're, I mean, we're doing what you want us to do, but think, you're I not think, giving us a guideline to do it by. Or we're giving it to you, but you're saying it's not, you don't believe it, basically, is what you're saying. Well, you're hearing. You don't trust. You're hearing one our person's survey. opinion. I, exactly, but you're concurring in some way with what he's saying. I, I think that the survey didn't really reflect the, the true abundance of what's there. And, and so that gives, gives us some pause by seeing a low ratio of shellfish per plot. But I do think that um, it has high abundance relative to the other areas, and that could just be a variance of, of the Sometimes I, that happens. Right. I mean, somebody could have come along from a boat and cleaned the place out. We have no idea. There's no idea to know that. It would, no matter what controls you put on the shellfish survey, there's no way to know that. Mm -hmm. And this it looks like the grid here could have started closer to the beach. I mean, closer to the marsh. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with you there. Um, having said that, though, even if you doubled the amount of shellfish they found, it's still less than a lot of the other projects in, in density, even if you, double, even if you just haphazardly doubled it. Can I say something? Sure. Yeah. 
sure. Yep. You know, our, our bylaws, uh, our regulations um, do specifically say no structures in shellfish beds, but it also gives us the ability to grant a variance. And we have, we have no definition of significant shellfish. We have the variability, the variables of the survey. We have the opinion of our natural resource officer who performance standards in place to say, okay, you put in this many bushels, we're going to count them now, we're going to count them in a year, we're going to count them in two years. We don't have any standards to prove that it has, um, it has been replaced within a year. I think our bylaws could, our regulations could be improved. I don't think given all that, um, that gray area, I find it hard to um, say no to a request. I wish we had more clear, um, ground, we, more solid ground to stand on to refuse a request. One, one thing we did get that we didn't have in previous instances was the letter from the uh, Division of Marine and Fisheries mentioning the impacts that docks have which I wish w they had done that when we keep talking about some of the ones we recently approved. Brand new that they if started that doing If that was there, yeah. if we had gotten that letter with their comments then, <laughs> it would have, I think, had a significant impact on that or the outcome of that vote. So where do we go from here? Do you want to continue this to, so that we can help provide you with more data or or what or are you ready to approve it <laughs> obviously we don't want a denial um, I hear some members from the poll here but what do, what do we do well we've had two hearings and I, I think that um, you, you've done a great job of trying to meet our interest in the last hearing and I, so I think that's been you know, good I, I just don't know what else can be done um, I would rather move the question and, and see where the votes lie that'd be my preference unless somebody can come up with something that they would like to ask for, for either more information or a project modification. But, um, I, don't, I, I'm not I really, wouldn't know what more information to ask for at this point. Yeah, I, I, that's where I feel. I think that uh, you, you've done, is, I think, a fair amount to try to raise the dock and go to monopiles, mm -hmm. and that's all really good. But I, I, myself, you know, we have two provisions in our, you know, regulations that are very clear to me and then we also have the Weapons Protection Act which I interpret um, to protect shellfish habitat as well so um, if you if you, I guess it's your choice if you wish to continue or if you wish to have a vote tonight um, well obviously I'd like to know which way everybody is thinking yeah we don't do that I know yeah. I know I think it's clear do you, what do you want to do Um, yeah, so I guess we'll, we'll continue it then. I mean, one, one option for you is to, you know, receive the votes and it's an approval or a denial. If it's a denial, you have recourse. The, the process doesn't stop. And yeah. So, you know, you, then you can appeal if you wish. So Agreed. at some point we should, you know, move the question. I get it. Um, and they're prepared to do that, but I don't think either, either of us want to go through that process. You know, that's the, the long and short of it is that it's uh, resources through the, that the town has to spend, resources that the applicant has to spend. Um, nobody wants to do that. I, I don't want to do that. I don't ever want to do that. Um, sometimes it's necessary, but um, this particular project stands out. Of all the other ones that I've pro proposed to you, this particular one stands out in the amount of mitigation, direct on-site mitigation, and the design to minimize any impacts, whether they're perceived by opinion or fact. That's really the strongest statement I can make. It far exceeds anything that's ever been in front of you before. And it's because the applicants are good stewards of the property and they're willing to, to go the extra mile. And I, I think you can go to the property and you've seen that. And I, I honestly, I don't think they should be penalized for that attitude because they come in and they're willing to do all this. And if they get denied, 
it'll get appealed. But if they get denied, it's like, why try? Father, be a good stu uh, steward of the property. Just go in and do what you want because you're going to deny it anyway. You know, that, that's the feeling that some people can get when they go this extra distance and it feels like it falls on deaf ears. So I understand that you compliment that they've, do that they've done this extra work. It means something. From a human aspect, it means something. And from a regulatory aspect, it means something. If, if it gets appealed, it goes to the state, and the state chooses to approve it. If it gets appealed, it goes to both the um, state DEP and the local superior court under the bylaw. If you choose to, it's it's two separate entities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it goes to it goes to two separate entities automatically. Mm -hmm. Automatic. Well, it depends. Okay. Oh, you can vote to approve under one or deny under the other, or it's two approvals under one, or it could be a denial under each. Because um, the performance or the regulations are slightly different under our bylaw than they are under the act. So whatever way you choose to vote, when you vote, I would recommend that you keep it, that you make it clear um, under the act and bylaw how you're voting. So the act says that it's okay if it can be restored to original condition within a year. Is that correct? There are performance standards. But what, what, and what are those standards? I think I just That's said for it. land containing shellfish under the Wetlands Protection Act. Yeah. So, that, yeah. that so they're it saying you can have. It has to be restored within, <coughs> within a year. A yeah. year to the original condition. Right. Land containing shellfish, not necessarily salt marsh, is different. Yes. So different. the. So the conditions under which the mill point dock was approved was to do three years of, of what, survey? To uh, both. So th they were new for that one, but so the mitigation is, is um, actually they have a choice of putting three, 30 bushels of seed a year. Uh, three. 30 bushels a year for three, for years? three years and doing monitoring. And doing or, monitoring yeah, to, help, to help establish understand. some data points for whether this works or not, right? And that's what I think everybody's trying to come to that, that number or understanding of what, whether these docks have a real impact or not. Mm -hmm. right. well, well, here's a point. And we're that saying that un we would also approve that condition, I guess, to help move those data points or help so you have more data points to use mm -hmm. as an understanding of whether or not this has a, a real impact, significant impact, I should say. Right, but here's the gray area that's hard to demonstrate. So you're talking about, you know, stocking shellfish that you can collect later and measure. What I think is often underestimated is, is habitat alteration that comes with docks and piers. And so for me, I want to protect habitat. Stocking clams for three years, it, it's a contribution, but it, it's a fleeting contribution. It's alteration to habitat to make that habitat less productive that I want to avoid. And to me, um, the float, the activity of the float and the boat at the float and the pilings cause scouring impacts that reduce the quality of shellfish habitat. And I really firmly believe um, that you see this, particularly in flowing areas like the Herring River. So. For me, I, I'm not that willing to um, say that the three years of stocking is the same as degrading the habitat. Uh, so it, it's Even with the depth of water that we've, we're five feet of water underneath of our float. It looks like three feet on the, the landward side at low water. And so Correct. Our, our regs are two and a half, so you've, so we're well you, you've stepped that. it up. I feel there's impacts at two and a half, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm never happy with two and a half, and I think that people often um, You'll, you'll see the two and a half that we approve all of a sudden they're sitting at two or one and a half. So well, the scouring impacts of floats, I think, is a, is a real impact. And there's data that supports that. Well, no. Oh. So well, how do we know any of this, well, I guess, is the I, question. I, well, I, I have to trust my observations over many years, and well, so that's my opinion. I know, but how does that argument hold up in court? But wait a minute. Going back to what I said before, we didn't have the letter from Divi Division of Marine Fisheries that we did now, which they put on record saying the impacts from docks and floats. 
which we didn't have previously. There were other letters we've gotten from them in the past. Yep. Okay. They did speak to Saltmarsh, Stan. So they, they were really referring to Saltmarsh, I think, primarily. So we, they have a study on salt marsh. We don't really have those studies for shellfish impacts. Okay, so Brad, no, if, no. If, we, if we deny it and then it goes to the next step and gets approved there, what is the mitigation? It, will it still be 30 bushels for three years? That's or do we good. lose the ability to request mitigation? We, pro we could. And it's part of the proposal. Right. So whatever part, I mean, you basically you're voting on the proposal. So this part of the to decide mm -hmm. if they have to do that in the right. future. Can we increase this mitigation? We have 30 bushels for three years. Can we increase this to 30 bushels for five or six years uh, it, without changing a regulation? It has been done, and it, you know it could be done. But again, I I highly value. The, the effort to avoid habitat impacts over stocking shellfish. Mm -hmm. Secondly, again, my interpretation of our wetlands regulations is that uh, it says we can't allow that structure. So those are the two issues that I see, but I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. Um, 30 bushels is a fair amount mm -hmm. to ask a proponent to provide. It's enough to see it 100 at a 10% you've heard me say this before then, mm -hmm. right? At a 10% survival rate, it's enough to, to uh, successfully seed 105,000 square feet over two acres. So for, you know, a couple hundred or a thousand square foot lot. Uh, That's of, all of which we have. It's, yeah, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. So increasing it probably doesn't do anything because you just make it's so much overkill anyway. The advantage here was that we would, that it, some of that was going to go directly on the site, which we've never. The. Um, but we have other sites. Well, I know, but and then the monitoring is there, which has been done before, but they're they're willing to do that too. So the so the you know we have the bylaws, local and state, which whichever we have the bylaws, we have guidelines. They give us specifics. You know, two and a half feet. So it, it's not fair to go to that two and a half feet and all of a sudden say, well, that's not good enough because it's not written anywhere. If it was, we would happily do it, but it's not. So it, it's unfair to move that bar. When we, when it, it, I mean, yes, change the regulation, absolutely. We're, doing, we're basically doing what we were told. Uh, if we were to, to deny it, we would not include that depth in the denial because you've covered, you've you met our regulations, so that would not be part of that. Okay, agreed. But again, you see how it feels to go the extra mile, and the opinion is still that it's not good enough. I understand. I, I really do, and I, and I think we would all want to have a dock if we were in your position at that location. There's no question. So it, it's just, I, I think, you know, somebody wrote these regulations for our dependent structures, and to me their intent was very clear and to protect shellfish habitat. <clears throat> I know, and, and we've done it based on, what, on the written instructions that we have. Are we continuing so, or are we moving the questions? We're going to continue, right? Yeah. Continue. Are you going to come with new information? <laughs> uh, yeah, at least a letter, yes. And, w and based on what you said, we'll see if we can find something that helps support one side or the other. And so I, for me, being an engineer, I'm going to get data that the conclusion I have not in my head. So there's two ways to do research. You can form a conclusion and then only look for data that supports your conclusion. To me, that's activist thinking. It's not productive. But a scientist will go and get the data and, form a, and then form a conclusion, even if it agrees or disagrees with their opinion. And I think that's very key to any research or data gathering. So I think we can uh, attempt to try to find something else for you that might help. My name is Michelle Hunton. Um, I'm from Ruben and Revan and um, representing the Falls as well. And I just wanted to step in on some of the questions of the appeals and some of the discussions regarding card data and opinions and personal experience. Um, if there is an appeal, a denial, and if there is an appeal under the Wetlands Protection Act, the DEP, and likewise, if there is an appeal under the local bylaw to the Superior Court, a court and the DEP is going to review the Wetlands Protection Act regulations, and likewise the local regulations to 
see if what was submitted complies with the regulations, and they're going to look at hard data. They won't take into effect anyone's opinion about whether or not the regulations are accurate or whether they should be more strict. And so, just in general, if this is appealed and what was presented meets the requirements under the Act and the bylaw, understandably, a variance is required, but we have submitted everything to show that there won't be impact to the reserve area. The courts and um, the EP is going to look at the hard facts that are submitted, and you know, it's my opinion that they would definitely approve the project. So I just wanted to make that point that, you know, opinions and personal experience, even though from a practical perspective that is important, I agree that's very important, but the court is not going to view it that way, and the DEP will as well. So I just wanted to mention that. How, how do you view the courts interpreting the bylaw that says there'd be no new structures in a map shellfish habitat? There's also, I think the court would view um, the opportunity to submit the variance from that provision and one of the aspects, I believe, under your bylaw in order to um, obtain a variance from that provision is to show that there's no environmental impact to this shellfish habitat. And I think we've shown that there is an, an impact, especially with the mitigation presented. Thank you for your opinion. <coughs> Thanks. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> I didn't want to. Didn't want to jump in, but Touché. but I just had to step in with the, uh, the with all the discussion regarding you know the data and what you know the opinion of your existing regulations. And as I've said before, I know that we don't always agree, but there's always disagreement with respect. So be that as it may. Do you wish uh, to have a date for a continuance? So what what's your thoughts on that? Um, October 16th is our next hearing. I have a hearing in San Antonio on that date. Yeah. And I'm going to be gone. My phone knows. I don't. Um, so November would be, so that puts us into November. It would have to be in November. I'm not back until. November 6th is the hearing after that. Whatever, whenever, because it's, unless it has to, does it have to fit within a certain 60 day, 90 day? What is no, the? It's really your choice. You can oh. continue it indefinitely. Does the date need to be set right now? Or a date certain. You could continue it indefinitely. What you, or if I mean, you do so that, you have, to re-notify, you have to re-notify your abutters. So if you continue to a certain date tonight, mm -hmm. you do not have to re-notify your abutters. If you continue indefinitely, you have to. Um, so I always think it's better to continue to a date certain, and then if you're not ready, you can ask for another continuance at that time. Whenever you're available. So it would be the 6th or the 20th of November. I'm going to say the 20th. Is that the one is and then we have um, Thanksgiving is until the 28th. Anything I'm going to do, I have to have them more than two weeks prior. Last so day. A week, within a week prior, if you would like it. I'll make whatever. <coughs> November 20th. November 20th. Okay. All right, I move we continue this hearing until November 20th. Second. Second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
It's such a practical thing that should be done. It's tricky though. It takes more. Yeah, and like for the, it's for the audience. Um, Caleb Multiple over sides. there, he can zoom right in. Any Water variation. He's doing the camera work. So. Temperature. Yeah, we all have copies, so. <coughs> Unless they feel it. All set, Mark? I guess so, yes. Okay, so next we have a notice of intent for 30 Harbor Road proposal for a pier ramp float and dredging. Okay. Uh, again, Mark Burgess, shorefront consultant representing uh, Mr. Novak and Michelle next to me for uh, Michelle Hunting. Hunting for Ruben and Redmond. Um, Glenn, Glenn had a minor, a minor procedure. Everything's fine, but uh, he's not here. <laughs> and uh, Michelle's been following the case from the very beginning. So, um, really. complication, if you will. Oh, that got changed out. Um, so two hearings ago we were asked, in, in January, we were asked to look into that to see if there's a way that we could come up with a plan that didn't include the intertidal dredging. We did that for the last hearing, um, and it was uh, very underwhelming. So it, that plan basically, from what I could read, from the audience and uh, from the harbor master gained zero support from anybody, even though it eliminated the largest, one of the largest concerns that people had for the project. So be that as it may, it wouldn't make sense to go forward with that plan, but we were asked to look into it, we did, and it wasn't well received in, in my opinion. So we, um, the plan before you for tonight is, is what we affectionately refer to as design number six out of seven. Um, it's the plan that was presented first on, in, uh, in January. Um, <clears throat> it does meet all of the bylaws and, and regulations with the one exception of the shellfish bylaw, or it's at number eight or, uh, in your local regs. Um, but it does meet all of those performance standards. Uh, even um, there's nothing in the regs that talks about intertidal dredging or the impacts thereof. Um, historically, we know that, that intertidal dredging has taken place numerous times in Richmere Harbor specifically, and even if you want to concentrate the, the, the uses and the data and the, um, all the different projects that are in Wichmere Harbor as its own separate ecosystem, we're not asking, to, this project doesn't ask for anything new that hasn't ever been performed uh, prior to it. So there's been lots of, there's been lots of dredging above the high tide line in Wichmere Harbor. Obviously docks are nothing new. This, is, this would honestly literally be the last one as we said before. So we're, um, anyway, so we are back to you with, with design number six. That is uh, the plan that was approved by Waterways. You can see the signature, the signatures that are on it. Um, and uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the similar discussions are gonna entail, so I'm just gonna be quiet at this point and Michelle can also answer questions for you. Thank you. Any other dates on the same year? Yep. Um, just to kind of go through my recommendations in the site summary, um, I do view this as different than the other project in, in that um, you are, regardless of whether it's intertidal dredging, so dredging on a coastal beach or intercoastal beach or below that within um, land containing shellfish and land underwater bodies, um, due to the um, um, I do see that the amount of shellfish here was, um, I'm not going to say significant because we don't know what significant necessarily is because there's no definition, but you had a relatively large percentage um, of plots where shellfish were found, 37.5%. Um, in my mind, this view, um, it proves it's a viable shellfish habitat. Um, usually I can stand behind dredging when it, the sediment quality is so poor that um, shellfish, there isn't shellfish present, um, and so clearly they, they, they want to be there. So um, this, I feel like, uh, sorry, not feel. Um, I can't recommend approval. 
because it is in a town and state map shellfish habitat and not just that more importantly because what the survey did find was that there was a mixed class of shellfish in um, what we would consider suitable sediment type. Um, in my opinion you have not proven that will, the proposed dock will not have an adverse impact to salt marsh. A two by eight storage bench is proposed. Again, this is um, hopefully not the um, crux of the project, but it does exceed that four foot width that we require. And um, <coughs> design, design potentially could have an impact on coastal beach, um, which would have an adverse impact on wildlife or marine fisheries. And I say that it will have a potential adverse impact on those things. And I also, I recommend it um, denial under, sorry, nearly read my notes one more time. Under the act and bylaw for those reasons <coughs> stated. Thank you, Amy. We have seen this one, I think it's our third time or fourth? Uh, be um, third for this filing. Yes, right. third. But then an, another they year, had another year before that. Yep. So, but by all means, let's have questions around the table. Carolyn, <coughs> any comments? Um, the idea of changing coastal beach into land under the ocean just doesn't sit right with me. I I don't like that aspect of it. I understand number seven, um, you know, solve that problem, but it isn't acceptable navigation wise. Um, so. That's where I'm at. Thank you. John? I don't think I have any further comments. What I said before applies here as well. Mm -hmm. Jim? Yeah, comments apply, and there's some other issues here as well. Um, and I, th I think when, when we're talking about revising our regulations, we've had a regulation in effect for decades that effectively uh, limits the amount of docks in town. Uh, space them out farther and whatnot. So if that regulation collapse and needs to be revisited. We may decide we want to do a 200 foot spacing or something. Uh, and there needs to be a discussion. So I, that's why I'm against approving these projects till we revisit them, figure out what the impacts are going to be of opening the flood per se. Um, and it gets, I, I would really like to see the regulations be much more reasonable, a simple spacing to me would be adequate. That's it. Stan? I have no further comments on this subject. Mm -hmm. Mark? I have no comments on this. No, I agree with Amy's comments that she's outlined. Okay. Um, so from a legal standpoint, I'm going to... Yeah, not, not to be the, the bad guy jumping in here, but um, just in our experience with these types of projects, we're, we're pretty confident that if this is appealed to the DEP, you would approve either the version six or version seven of this project. Um, and also, in appeals to Superior Court, um, as many of you know, one of the issues looked at is whether or not the approval was arbitrary or capricious. And um, I think of, you know, an argument here that because this is really the one property left in which Mare Harbor that doesn't have a dock, you know, and all of the other ones were approved, that denial here would be considered arbitrary and capricious. Um, but we're hoping, you know, to not get to that point and not appeal it and, you know, try to figure something out with you if that's possible. But, and, um, and if the regulations change between now and th through the appeal process, that doesn't affect this application? Correct. No. Right. No. Thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I would tend to agree with the DP comment because um, in, in the case that they may go that, that way because that's, um, th those regulations aren't as clear to me as the town wetlands protection regulations. But I would, I would still advocate that we, it's, um, the difference here I think is that you have functional viable shellfish habitat that is proposed to be dredged and turned into something else. So um, I don't find that supportable. And, um, and also I think if you look at the last three approvals in Wichmere Harbor, two of them were, were quite contested. And I think two of them were deadlocked um, and then withdrawn and they came back. And so two of the three um, passed just barely. So there, there was sentiment on the commission that uh, they would not be approved. So 
I, I don't think it was arbitrary. I, I think it was th these same discussion points came up. Um, this is a little bit different, and it is habitat that would be dredged and altered. So it has all those issues of the other ones. It has habitat alteration on top of it. I think Skipper Lee's was grandfathered in, but had a dock there before, too. Well, he, and he also didn't really have the habitat. Didn't really have the shellfish habitat, and that's, that side of the harbor is very, once you get subtitle, it's very silty. Um, it has a little lens of coarse material with a shellfish intertidally, but, um, you know, that one wasn't really contested. Yeah, what, that was one of the ones that isn't in an area designated by the town, so it was a little bit easier in that regard. But intertidal dredging was still a concern there, but we were able to, we were able to massage that one so that we could eliminate the intertidal dredging. Mm -hmm. Here, as far as the variance goes, there is, there is no way you can put a dock at the site without dredging. It's impossible, unless the town decides to dredge this harbor, which is probably on the horizon at some point. But um, So the, if for the purposes of variances, it's impossible to do this project without dredging. It is possible to do it without the intertidal dredging. So, um, and DEP might come back and say, you know what, we're gonna throw this design out, and they're gonna make us do number seven, and then the only person that's going to be happy would be the applicant. And I don't really want that either, you know. The idea is to find middle ground that we can all work with. And I think, um, you know, six has the support of basically everybody up to this room. So that, that's unfortunate. I, I wish the different uh, bodies. that there has not been a dock permit at this location. It's a difficult location to have this happen. Well, what for the applicant said. And for habitat. The applicant just said that at the time he had his little sailboat, he had it on the mooring out, out in the outer harbor, it got beat up. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of sat back. He's like, well, I, you know, it wasn't that important to him. But now as he gets older, he's like, you know, it's time. And mm -hmm. so that's a big reason why. And then I don't know about, I don't know what, he's had the house for, what, 15 years? or so or more I don't know I can't speak to anybody before him but I remember him saying it wasn't on his radar at the time but right. now it is I don't think the people before him were boaters I know the I people mean, that built the house well there was a dock on in there's a picture in the file of a dock a, a really flimsy one <laughs> which is why it wasn't there yeah. but there was a, a 19 uh, 40s, 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 40s I think mm -hmm. so there was a dock here at, at some point, um, yeah, that picture is in the file. Mm -hmm. I, I can almost, I, you know, I can't remember everything that's in the file. It's really, it's really thick and comprehensive. Yeah, mine's that same size. This is only like one copy of everything, too. <laughs> mine's that big, and that's just for 2019. The previous filing is the same size. I know, I know. So, you can't say it hasn't been from a lack of trying. Nope. Yes, we appreciate that. Any comments from the audience? Any further comments from commissioners? Or? All right, well then I'd, I'd like to ask for a motion on the, on the proposal. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, deny the notice of intent for 30 Harbor Road um, under the Howard Water Dependent Structures Bylaw 304 8D for being more than four feet in width. 304-8G proving there will be no impact to salt marsh. 304-8H for not for being in town map shellfish area. As well as I should probably read the whole thing, right? It it would make that. yeah. For the record, um, it would be clear. Also under the Howard Wetlands Protection Regulations. One period ten three B four for being more than four feet in width. Um, ten th one ten three B seven for not proving there will be no next uh, salt marsh, and one ten three B eight for being a town map shellfish habitat. Also under the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, three ten CMR ten thirty two three. That they have not proven that the project will have an adverse impact on salt marsh. Um, 310 CMR 102736 that the project 
they have not proven that the project will not have an adverse impact on the interest of a coastal beach. And 310 CMR 1034B, the project could alter relief elevation. And 1034D, that it could cause an alteration in distribution of sediment grain size. Nice one. Yeah, that's the longest one. <laughs> Seconded by any discussion? Seeing no discussion, uh, so we have a motion to deny. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. So we have one opposed and four in favor? No, five. Five. Five, five in favor. Okay, so the motion carries. Does er Ernie's uh, alternative? He, oh, okay, so we can't vote ever. Not or not, well, not ever, but. We hope to bring him back at some point. comment, Mark. Say again? I'm just here to comment. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you worked hard in this one, Mark. Mm -hmm. I always try to make everybody happy. It's a tough one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm writing it for you. No, but yes. I mean, it's generally not you very long. Yeah. Kind of I know. Up. We're all ready to take him on. I think. Oh. Kind of tired. This will be the one for Jeremy. Yeah, they're, they're generally not. That's <clears throat> bigger issue at stake. This is. Got some green cards for me over there. Okay. Okay, next to the agenda, we have a notice of intent for 197 Route 28, proposal to demolish an existing structure and construct a new dwelling. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Rick Judd, Moran Engineering. Uh, to your left, my right, is Suave Osev, the proposed buyer of 197 Route 28. Uh, where some of the board members got a site visit here. And um, as you know, there's two existing, I'll call them dilapidated structures on property. Uh, perhaps it's being kind, but they're there. The uh, proposal before you, um, the, the, the lot itself is in the 100-year floodplain. Most of that area is. And uh, what the applicant or what Suave would like to do is uh, raise the existing structures, um, propose a new dwelling and a new Title V system. Uh, within uh, making uh, everything compliant from building and flood vents, et cetera. Um, we don't have any direct resources, uh, coastal embankments, uh, waterways, et cetera, directly here. It's strictly in the floodplain. Um, I'm going to keep this simple. It looks like you've had a few things before you, and uh, uh, Shakespeare said brevity, brevity, brevity. So at this point, uh, the applicant and I will take any questions that the chair, uh, the board, and uh, any audience members may have. Thank you. Amy, any <coughs> comments for us? Try to keep it brief, too. Um, this isn't an AE11 floodplain, so the new structure would have to meet those regulations. Uh, the current stru dilapidated structures do not. Um, do you, just a question, do you know how old those structures are? No idea. Just the reason I asked that question is because if they are of a certain age, over 100 years old, then you'll have to go to historic regardless of it's in a historic district or not, but you'll have to have that checked. Um, so just want to make sure you don't forget to look into that. Um, the, so for the Conservation Commission, there's very loose regulations with the state and our local bylaw in terms of land subject to coastal storm flowage, which is also known as flood zone. Basically, the new structure cannot have a negative impact on the adjacent structures in the event that we have a flood. In this case, it would be a flood from the Herring River. Um, so my only request is that going forward that we work together to try to save some of the trees and vegetation on the site, um, particularly like maybe in the southern portion of the lot. Um, but as proposed, there are very few performance standards and um, there's no other wetland resource areas here. So I would like to see some semblance of a limit of work potentially. Um, maybe that could even be discussed at the on-site. Um, 
because right now it does appear that the entire site potentially could be altered as shown. So those, those are really my only comments. I, I'd recommend approval of the project, provided we can nail those things down. Okay. Thanks, Amy. Um, let me start with you again. No questions. Okay. John? Oh, uh, no I'm questions. Gonna, I'm going to abstain, sorry. Okay. Jim? All right. Yeah, I would just recommend uh, compliance with the fertilizer regulations. That's my We're aware of that. Okay. Yep. My only okay. comment. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I don't have any questions. Okay. On this. I have no remarks other than I support the project. Yeah. No any? comments. Okay. Amy, can we go forward now? With, with, um, or we think we should wait for more information? I don't think so. I okay. think um, we could, um, or there might be a question in the audience when I'm done, yeah. but um, no, hold on one. <laughs> My name is David. Uh, I have a copy next to the slide. Can you speak at the podium, please? I'm sorry? Can you come to the podium? Oh, no, please. <clears throat> Yeah, my name is Dave Turp, and I have the uh, property next to Suave, and he's a nice, nice guy. He does hard-working guy, and he's my landscaper, so I'm not here to cause any problems with. But he does have he does have a landscaping business out front, and this lot is behind the landscaping business, which abuts that property. Just want to make sure that the landscaping business doesn't end up in the in this in this property. The property that you're looking at is a residential. And Suave also owns the property out front, which is commercial. Yep. And I'm also going to remind to him that he doesn't put it in a dock. <laughs> <laughs> a pond in a dock, right. Or dock. Fair enough. Um, we're not the zoning board, so we can't make the, uh, the, the zones cut up, cut the very top of this property between residents. Maybe someday, you know. See, He's a little closer to the water, you know. Maybe someday. Sea's coming up, so maybe someday. Yeah. I think um, we can condition the project. To, uh, we can we can move on the project tonight with. Okay. And I do appreciate your interest in reducing fertilizing oh, yeah. and, and chemical loading, you know, close to the Herring River watershed. That's fantastic. Do we have a motion for the project? I'll move to approve the notice of intent for 197 Route 28 in West Harwich. Second. Seconded by Jim. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Stand. No, so you have all the conditions. I'll write them for you. Um, so, and you'll get to see them. They'll review them in, in two weeks. I'll draft them. They'll see them in terms of limit of work right. and on site meetings and everything. We'll I'll nail that down. Yep. One abstention. One abstention. Okay. All right. Very good. Good to go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> okay, next we have a notice of intent. For 115 Sequatam Road, proposal for a dock. Uh, good evening. For the record, my name is Matt Farrell from O'Reilly Associates, uh, representing Jack Chandler. Um, so. <clears throat> The proposal here is to um, is to permit the existing dock. Um, um, this would be the first step, and then it's got to go to Harwich Waterways, and then Chapter 91. Um, so I'll just go with a little history. Uh, the Chandlers bought the property in 2012. Uh, the decks, stairs, dock were all in existence. Prior to them owning it, Morancy, Morancy's owned it or bought it in 1950 and the decks, stairs and docks supposedly built sometime around that time. 
I'm not sure if they've been rebuilt over time. Um, that's about 70 years, so I'm sure things have been redone. Um, I have read through um, Amy's comments. Um, uh, one of the questions was how far is the dock to the right of the property as you look out in the pond, and that's about 50 or 60 feet, and um, the dock on the left is plus 80 feet. Um, um, so anyway, the dock consists of an 11 by 8 platform on the shore, uh, 4 foot wide, 46 foot long dock that goes out into the waters of the Long Pond, and then a 19 and a half by 9 foot L-shaped at the end. Uh, there's approximately 2.8 feet of water on the seaward side of the, of the L-shaped landing, and approximately 2.5 feet of water on the inside. Uh, the owner has stated that he needs at least 2.8 for the boat that he has because it's got an inboard motor on it. Um, again, I've gone through Amy's comments and I'd be more than happy. This is kind of a fact finding issue with the board. So at that, I'll open it up to questions. Thank you. Any thoughts for us, Amy? Mm -hmm. So they have to go to waterways, um, so we can't vote on this tonight. Um, this is a couple of, uh, so in this instance, it's kind of hard um, to know exactly when things happened. Um, you know, I relied on, I looked a little bit on Google Earth, um, so but until the pictures got too blurry and I couldn't see, um, you can see <laughs> it from the late 90s, early 2000s, you can see things kind of there. Um, but as far after that, I don't really know. So um, I know that but when they purchased the property in 2012, it is very clear that everything is there as is currently there right now. Um, the dock itself, I think, um, so, but I do view that when we have this opportunity to repermit, that we should put things into compliance with the regulations. And our dock and pier regulations have been in place for a long period of uh, time. It hasn't just been the past few years. So in this instance, um, for the dock itself, what I think is most kind of out of whack is that L <coughs> end there, the size of that. Um, it really should be about 100 square feet. Um, you're over that there. As far as the total square footage of the structure, um, there's a little bit of a question in the regulations in terms of what the total size is. That You don't need to take into account the four-foot walkway width leading out to that. It really is that end is supposed to be about 100 square feet. Um, I forget what yours is. I put it down here. 175 yep. Yep. square feet. Um, and actually, because of you're so close to that two and a half, three foot range, too, I'm not saying you have to do this, but if they were in, in any way, if the commission decides that the dock needs to be reconfigured to make meet regulations, I would personally be in favor of adding a few feet on to the length of the dock to get it into deeper water, especially if we have low water years, because you are so far underneath. Our, our maximum length is 80 feet, and you're at 47. Yep. So if you were to add a few feet of length to the dock, if you had to amend the dock in any way, it would just be a benefit and protect the water. Um, Today we would not have permitted the two, the deck and the essentially the landing that's there. So that is up for discussion. Um, this is the deck on the beach, and then the landing up on the hill, or yeah, both of the things that you have labeled as deck okay. essentially. I don't think today we would have um, voted in favor of those two items, but also, I mean, if they were there prior to 1978 that can fit in that footprint then that predates the wetlands protection act but we just don't know that information we say the pre previous owners owned it from the 50s but when did they put it in um, we can look back on the aerials and see if we yeah see if you can see more so i didn't go back very far um since we don't we can't close tonight anyway maybe a little bit more research could be done to figure that out um or if you're getting a question to that wouldn't the onus be on the owners to have received a permit even if it was predated the act? Uh, there were several rounds of amnesty. Wouldn't it be? Currently, familiar? the previous owners um, <coughs> who owned the property back in the 90s, about 96, there was the amnesty program. 
to license these these structures. I don't know how people were notified, but we have a bunch of people who came in in the in the mid '90s and licensed their dock under the AMSD program. If you didn't do that, then right. you're not a permitted structure. So that also, so they could have, if they had licensed this under the amnesty period with this configuration, with this big of an L, and everything else, um, the deck mattered because it's above the water line of the pond. But um, then the stock could have probably been granted amnesty from those regulations. But right now, it doesn't have that. I do think that this spot, we'll have to see what the um, water um, Harbor Master and Waterways Committee says, but um, I think this this could support a dock. I don't think we're talking, I don't think I'm ever going to, I'm not going to suggest, can't have one. Um, and But I would suggest, and I'll just put it out there now, that if the dock has to be replaced, that it should be the type with the big, big feet on the bottom instead of um, piles driven in the sediment be made more of like an aluminum structure with through flow, flow grading to allow more penetration and sunlight. Um, but I think with, with not having a little bit of information tonight, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you, Amy. So I'll swing it down to Ernie to start that end for, for Did a change. Did you want to mention the uh, uh, variance from the sideline from the other property line? Oh, well, technically that's more of a um, Chapter 91 regulation. It's a 25 foot from, it's ours too, but we just echo the DEP Chapter 91. Um, so yes, um, if you're less than 25 feet from adjacent, um, not adjacent structures, property lines, it requires a variance with Chapter 91. So, but if you're not, it's more of a navigational thing. Um, and it becomes more of an issue a lot of salt water. So, so is it, on the applicant's onus to uh, establish that the platforms were permitted okay. or prior or existed prior yeah and then if, <laughs> if they can't then it would be your job to say how these are not having an adverse impact to their respective resource areas okay. <clears throat> and which in, in this case would be probably you have a little bit of a beach um, doesn't really have, I think there's a little BBW maybe in there. Um, and then the um, the bank itself. Yep. And our regulations today would require that the access to the dock would be limited to a four foot wide walkway or stairway, correct? There have been small occasions where we've allowed like, um, especially down really steep banks, where you allow, um, Platform. platform. Yeah. The bank, something was being started there. The that's rail. That's the other property. The, the, pardon? Sorry, that's the other property. What's it called? The, the post that you're talking about? Yeah, I thought it was this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Oh, that's 14. Um, yeah, I guess uh, if it's uh, decided that it wasn't permitted or pre existing, I'd be maybe in favor of it coming into compliance with the regulations. That's, that's all. So um, the plan that you submitted shows a 11 or oh, roughly 12 by 8 deck on the landward end of the walkway out to the dock. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the photograph, one of the photographs anyway, letter shows that deck, but just to the, I guess, the west of it, there's another somewhat dilapidated uh, looking deck with boats on it there that's not shown in the plan at all. So I'm wondering how you're accounting for that and what you want to do with that. I, I just want to be clear on where you're talking. He's got it up on his screen too if you want to see it. Right there. This is the whatever it is, 11 by 8 platform. Yeah. 
And then there's this other thing sitting on the beach that you don't account for in the plan at okay. all. There's boats on it. And I guess along with that, uh, has this dock been coming out of the water? Yes, seasonal dock. Where, where does it go when it comes out of the water? On the decks. Yeah, yeah I think it's stored on the decks. Including that extra deck there that is not shown in the plan? I'm assuming. Okay. Other than that, um, um, I guess I agree that the thing should. Well, another point is looking at the plan, there's a number given for the total square feet of the dock, which I don't, I can't make it uh, correspond to anything on the plan, so I'm not sure what that is. It says, um, yeah. it says 286. 286 square feet, but the total square feet of the, of the pier plus the dock is more like 350 or something. And the dock itself, the thing at the end, is less than that, so I'm not sure. I just, probably the, the plan should have numbers <coughs> that correspond to what, what's actually on there. <coughs> We can certainly check that. I think it might correspond to just the four foot wide section that goes from the deck to the 19 and a half by nine foot. That's probably <coughs> okay. Well, we can make it more clear. I don't think we need, I think we're the end, the L point is the part that has to be about 100 square feet. Yep. Right. The rest of it really just has to fit into the feet wide by no longer than 80 feet long. So the total okay. square footage I don't think is a huge concern. As far as I'm concerned. Right. So if you just want to give us the length and then the size of that end, that would be good. Gotcha. Don't need to get it. <clears throat> I don't know, Amy, when you were looking at photographs, the, in, in satellite or aerial photographs, did you see that extra bit of decking in those photographs? It was hard to see because of the tree cover. I, I, you can see basically where the dock and are <coughs> attached essentially to it are, but it's hard to see to either side based on what I saw, just using aerials. It's our typical, so, so who anybody in the audience is aware of for this, typical regulation is that dock storage has to be outside the resource area. Um, in this case, you know, above top of bank on the property in a flat storage area, not on the bank itself. And we can just, I mean, but if the decks are permitted, then maybe that is discussed as an option. But we're trying to get docks and boats off the beaches. Understood. Yeah. <laughs> Carolyn, any comments? I have no comments. Okay. I'll just follow up with a couple comments on, on the deck. I, I do think the deck, you know, causes habitat impacts to the beach. Um, certainly wouldn't be permitted now. So I think that the, the bar is kind of high for you, to, if you want to keep the, the decks on the beach, to try to make a case for that. Because um, that's one thing I have the most concern about is, is those decks, getting the, the rest of the dock into compliance with the regulations. You do have a very steep slope, so I can understand it's hard getting that that dock up out of the resource area and up the bank in the winter. So maybe there's something that can be done, you know, with the existing storage area, if that was to be retained. But I guess just personally, I feel there's a greater habitat impact with the deck on the beach than the deck where you have your storage presently. That's more of a regulation issue to me. Any comments from the audience? No? So. When are you going in front of waterways, Matt? Uh, I don't know, but I think it's been filed. This is John O'Reilly's project. Usually, right? okay, so usually they, I think they usually meet the third Wednesday of the month, too, yep. which would put them the same day as our hearing. So we can schedule you for the next hearing and try to get you first on their agenda maybe and last on ours. Or we can also do, we, so we can put it on and then if you decide to continue to our first November meeting, 
you can do that. Okay, so, so you want let's to go to the next one. So let's put you on the 16th sure. and see when you're going to waterways. So October 16th. Okay, I move that we continue this hearing for 115 Sequadron Road until November 6th. October 16th. Oh, sorry, you just said that. <laughs> Second, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Isn't it crazy that we're already talking about November? It is. It is. And that is October right now? We were spoiled by amazing September. I know. Well, even though it's raining, October isn't so bad so far. Yeah. Hasn't been much of it. Just starting. Yesterday was good. <laughs> yeah. Nice and crisp. Are you staying on for the next one? Yeah, I am. Too. Okay. All right. So let me announce it. Next, we have a notice of intent for 14 Sequatum Road proposal for a new dwelling. Again, for the record, Matt Farrell from O'Reilly and Associates. Um, to my right is the property owner, uh, Bill Gibson, and in the audience is his wife, Tracy. Uh, so, as stated, the property is located at 14 Sequatum with uh, direct front of John Sheep's Pond, I mean, Long Pond. Um, served by an existing single family dwelling, an existing cesspool septic system, approximately 21,000 square feet of land. Uh, the wetland resource that we're measuring the buffer zone from is a bordering vegetative wetland along the edge of the pond. So the proposal is to replace, raise and replace the dwelling, including a new Title V compliant sewage system. We have a limit of work set at 51.7 feet. Uh, we're also proposing a stone patio at approximately 53 feet. Uh, basically, working with the grading that's on the site, we're not really proposing a lot of contour changes. Um, we have spec'd some mitigation for the, for the project. Um, uh, we're proposing to remove all the alliantis um, on the property, basically, but we only counted the removal for mitigation of what we're removing in the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, and then we're going to replant that area with native grass and uh, 17, uh, 17 shrubs. I did get um, uh, Amy's comments <clears throat> that um, the commission has changed their regulation from disturbance in the 100-foot buffer zone requiring a two-to-one mitigation. So we're just under that. Um, spoke to the owners uh, before the meeting and today, and uh, what we'd like to do is provide approximately 300 more square feet of mitigation. I kind of highlighted it in red on the plan there, just to the right of the access to the pond, and would be more than happy to submit a revised plan to show that planting area. Basically, it would be planted mitigation planting with those similar shrubs and similar way of, of uh, prepping the ground with topsoil and jute netting. At that, I'll open up the questions from the commission. Thank you. Any, any thoughts for us? Yeah, it was, and I have to apologize for this for not letting you know this. Um, it was only there were. Only many times. I don't know why the um, the proposed stone patio. For some reason, it, uh, to me on the planet showed up as when it was showed up light I thought it was there and then I realized no it's not there currently um, have a no new structure regulation we don't allow any that was in October of last year so no new structures including um, patios decks fence are allowed within 60 feet of a resource area so you're at 60 feet and this is really just to provide a better buffer to, to the edges of ponds it's to prevent that forward croach, uh, creep to um, the edges of our resource areas so you would you'd be I'm not saying it's off the table I'm just letting you know it's um, it is our regulation and are the variance um, from our regulation the 60 foot uh, no new structure regulation um, that's not to say that potentially additional mitigation along that top couldn't mitigate for that something that size or maybe it wouldn't reduced a little bit um, so going from there I hope everybody um, several people went to the site with me today 
but I hope everybody who didn't got to go because you have kind of a um, you don't see Tree of Heaven too much in Harwich and you have lots of Tree of Heaven they're just relentless over there you can see them just coming up in, the, in your terrible. Cape Cod lawn it's, it's yeah. insane <laughs> yeah so are you only proposing to remove them on no they're going to be gone from the whole site the whole site yep as, as much as we can i mean okay. i'm sure they'll pop up for years but <laughs> yes okay so that was one of my questions is because your mitigation area kind of only shows on that western side yeah um i would be very much in favor of you're trying to get as much as you can out of that um, and if you do end up having to treat anything you would have to use a certified applicator to do so mm. um, and let's see so there's that was the big thing was the patio and that was my oversight on not catching that um, I had asked for a little bit more mitigation along the top of the slope there we did see and I didn't have a chance to speak with my administrative as, uh, uh, assistant conservation agent the wood ramp and landing was that done with an administrative permit that any? stuff is older than me I don't even know when it was built. The walkway that we're starting to rebuild. Yeah, we restarted that. Okay. All the other stuff was a replace. The upper landing was a replacement of what was there. The okay. stairs are probably the stairs, the landing, and the pilings down below have got to be over 50 years old. Okay. I don't so even what know. we saw leaning up against the house. That's the, the was old what was going down. Okay. So yep. maybe we. It looked about four feet wide. Maybe we include this that in this application because technically even though it's a replacement it is on the slope mm -hmm. there within jurisdiction um, I mean I hate to even bring it up but do we know if the docks permitted we're in the process of okay so I was very interested in seeing this okay. previous presentation yeah. Yeah. okay all right so it's good to know that there uh, it's an existing old dock that we all saw on the property you're in the process of putting Together application for that. Yep. Okay. Good. Um, so with that, I think I'll open it up. I mean, I think the biggest thing here in my site summary, I said it wasn't any closer, but that's because I thought what was on paper was actually out there with the patio, but it's not. So I think that's the biggest um, question that I have for this project is. Would you want to keep the patio as it is and maybe add some additional mitigation on top of that too um, or would you like to see it reduced completely out of the 60 and that's those are my questions. The patio was just trying to make a little level spot there by the house because it pitches quite a bit towards yep. the lake on that on that yep. side. Thanks Sammy. Do you want to start Ernie? Um, yeah I, I guess I'm not clear I see that you have in your calculations here you have uh, let's see if I over there, close to 2,000 square feet of mitigation, is that right? Yes. And where is that going to be? I'm going to approach the board and just kind of show you. This whole side of the property starting at the 100 foot buffer zone, we're going to remove the allianthus on the entire right. property. Yep. But starting here, and then this, this is our mitigation area right here, and then here's the detail of it, and then all these notes go with it. So basically, all, all the invasive species will be removed from that area. Um, the topsoil will be, will be taken down to the topsoil. Any native species will be left in there. We're going to put new topsoil in, grass seed, jute netting, and then plant it with the 17 stubs that we proposed. Okay. 17 doesn't seem like a lot for that size of a, an area. They're, They're big shrubs. It, I've learned variety. over the years that if you show, if you fill this whole thing with shrubs, you're just planting way too many. And you go to these sites and they're just choked out in 10 years. So this is going to be for the future. Plus, I, I know there's some native species already in there, mm -hmm. and we're proposing to leave those. Oh, I see. Okay. I re re uh, recommend to overseed with native grass seeds in there, too. That's part of it. So uh, I think one of the comments I made, too, is um, pure invasive removal is sometimes not um, it can be some mitigation but it shouldn't be all the mitigation that was the other reason I had mentioned the planting along the top of the bank too to basically give up a little bit of what you have as Cape Cod lawn and reclaim that as natural area so um, 
the invasive removal and replanting is, is great. But. Okay. And remember, we're doing the entire site. We only counted what's in the hundred foot buffer zone. Yeah. <laughs> but you, are, you also are doing some on the eastern edge of the property. Yeah. But, but what is going to go there instead? And is it just Cape Cod Lawn instead? Okay. I didn't really count that. It was such a small little area, and I just didn't get into it. I guess if I had more time, I should. Yeah, but. it's mostly near the septic on that side. It's like bamboo and alianthus. And yep. Okay. Definitely. Just wondering. And so no, no work on the bank then, Matt. Nothing proposed. No, no. Okay. There's no invasives out there that I saw. No. Okay. Good. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I did not see any. I didn't go look. I wasn't focused on the banking. No, it's, it's pretty clear, clean, you know, native species out there. Okay. Um, I have no other questions. Mark? On the east side of the building, you've got a couple of big oaks. Are you going to try to leave them? It looks like it's going to be pretty tough. I think it's, that they might be in the way of the dig. Yeah. You know, we're bringing the house not much further to the east, but slightly. Um, we'll have to really take a look at it. I think they're going to be close to being... They're probably going to have to go. I think you're yeah. going to be hard pressed to leave them. I think so. And uh, as far as the patio, I was talking about, is it? Uh, what is your preference about trimming it back to get it out of the 60? Or what are your what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, we just I basically just figured I'd throw it on there for the for the meeting just to see. And I don't have any set dimensions, you know. A little bit to make it fit. That's that's fine. Well, I mean, we we haven't had a chance to talk about it. Yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of throw it on there just to trim off six or seven like feet. Seven that. feet off, right? Yeah, but you could also feet. extend it a little bit west too yeah. to get a little bit more area. Well, let's let's see what we can do here. What it would look like. This is a ten. It nips it almost in half. It would end up being about eight feet wide in order to conform. So you could make it longer too, yep. either side if you wanted to. And the commission can grant a variance if they see. We typically don't allow going closer than existing. So you yeah, we, we backed the house actually back than it than was there, hoping to buy a little bit there. Gotcha. So the, the way the, the commission looks at a patio is the same as the house it's structure. Just, yeah. Ask them that. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we're swayed by how it's constructed. Well, that's, that was going to be my next question. Is there, uh, I guess, a, a suitable, like a leaching type of? More pervious, the better. Yeah, pervious system. We can still make it a, I mean, we can certainly make it a pervious stone patio. Well, you've got another issue, too. I mean, your grade's going to drop off right there, so you're going to have to carry the outside edge. So you're going to have to build wall. it up with something, yeah. some fashion of a wall. Actually, that's more of the structure of it. Anything else, Mark? Nope. I'm in. I'm done. Okay. Stan? Okay. Jim? Uh, just a couple of questions on the mitigation area. Is there a, a planting list? Yes. Uh, it's on the mitigation notes on the plan. Move again. <clears throat> I see it here. Note three? Yep. Seems good. And then the size yeah. is, um, yeah. <clears throat> so it's is, three, it should be five, not is three, this three. plan to be a uh, naturalized area then? grows in between naturally. Exactly. Yeah. Low, low maintenance. Except for the tree I had to keep that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, 
that's all for me for now. Okay. So, just at the other end, the anthos on the on the east side. East, east side. There appeared to be a lot over there. Is that not your lot? Some of it. A portion of it. Are you just gonna. Obviously, you can't take care of stuff. And stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I don't know if you have a. If I need to have a 10 foot buffer to the property line, I mean, I'm friendly with the neighbor, so he probably wouldn't care less if I went in there. And I think he'd go down. right to the property line. Okay. And we'll stake the property for him so yeah. he knows where it is. You can tell the Olsons, too, like if they are interested in removing them from their property, too, that we can work with them on that. That would be beneficial for me because I'm sure they're going to try to come back. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you leave anything. So. They look pretty happy. Um, yeah, we're, I'm very familiar. I'm familiar with them. So if. It's a matter of doing a few on their property. Maybe we could do something like that, either administratively or something. Okay. To get that grove out of there. Yeah. Um, I'm not a. I don't object to granting a variance for that um, patio. I I don't think the difference of seven feet is going to affect whether the resource area will be um, attractive to. Uh, or not, I think your life is going to be centered toward toward the water going down, and I don't see that that ten foot buffer there prevents anything. Um, so as as Ernie said, though the more pervious, the better in general. Sure. And correct me, isn't that buffer the road? No, that's the other Sequato. Okay. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and I stand. We'll get off straight sooner or later. Oh, that's right. The last we saw a lot of properties there. today. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, I've got a few comments. Um, unlike Carolyn's comment, I do view that 60 foot as kind of a hard reg that really needs a hardship to allow a variance. So I kind of differ a little bit on my interpretation. And, um, and I do think you've got to make up some mitigation area because. Um, you need to go two to one, and I, I don't view invasive plant removal in itself as mitigation for increases in the 50 to 100. It can contribute to it, but it, it shouldn't be the whole story. So um, I would like to see some, you know, thought to doing something on the other side um, in terms of having habitat that, that goes from lawn to, you know, naturalized area. On that, the that, other side. On the east side, side you're talking about? East side. Yeah. Yep. So that, that, that's, you know, if you can give up a lawn, then that to me is, is mitigation. Invasive. Yeah, that's outside the 100 foot buffer zone? Well, that's another. Um, really, really isn't. Oh, there's, that, lawn. there's that strip between our property and the Olson's property that really is, isn't used. Mm -hmm. You know, so that whole like stretch this? right there. Yeah, that yeah. whole east side. Yep. It, are there any hard structures in the zero to 50 that are not necessary that uh, okay, serve no, as mitigation? We didn't look at that. Oh, okay. <laughs> we can certainly look at that. Yeah, I, I think because um, your numbers might be close if you look at uh, just the invasive removal. But uh, again, um, you know, it's often in the interest of the property owner to remove that invasive plant without the mitigation requirement. So what, what that habitat becomes is important in my mind for being mitigation. So I guess those are the two comments, not, not favoring a variance for the patio and um, I guess beefing up the mitigation a little bit to naturalize some more habitat. Yeah, I mean, any comments from the audience? Yeah. Yes. I am uh, Dave Byron. We live at the property across uh, on Pleasant Lake and on the bike trail, and Bill and his father have been wonderful neighbors over the years. We've been there 18, 19 years, and I do have an issue with the Aliantis because when the bike trail was re there, as you noticed, if you were there today, you see the large rails there. I've gone out there with the town and with the bike rail commission and I've cut down these trees uh, quite often on my own. What happens, and when we moved in there, the roots are getting up and the bike trail is getting eroded. And we, when we moved there, we called the, an ambulance several times for people because they'd hit that hard where these tree roots are 
screaming and I'd like to see if the town because it I believe it is town property to remove those aliantes in the middle of those bike trails it's a potential it's safety hazard uh, you know if you can work on with the uh, the rail commission or something but it's just a perennial thing and I've done it twice a year out of goodwill but these now it, it's the, the the brand new bike trail has been disrupted so that's something for you folks to consider Thank you very much. Yep. If you wouldn't mind on maybe the back of one of the agendas or on the sign-in sheet, if you just want to put your phone number on there, we can be in touch with you. Yes, I, I okay. have signed in. Yeah, Did you put your phone number, though, so I know? I will. Okay. Have we you tried can get to somebody from the town to see what we can do. Okay? Have you tried to, to reach out to the Department of Conservation and Recreation? Many times. And they're not responding, yeah. You know, I think they turned, they said, no, that's the town, so. No interest. I have right. tried. Yep. Yeah, we own a certain, the DCR has a certain portion and we have a certain mm -hmm. portion off that. So, yep. let's, let's see what we're talking about. Okay. In the back, please. Yes, I'm Joyce Burse. I live at 19 Sequatam Road. And we have been neighbors of the Gibsons for over 50 years. They're great people. Um, his folks were wonderful folks, and now the son is going to take over, and we look forward to them as our new neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. So do you want to see some uh, plan revisions? <clears throat> I think so. I, you know, I, I think we've got to, you know, you've got one to one in, in the plan. It's got to go two to one. And um, how do people feel about you know, beefing up that mitigation a little bit. Any other ideas beyond what I gave? I have a couple of mm -hmm. thoughts that I can convey. To okay. Basically, stuff, more stuff at the top of the bank. Maybe a few things on the east side. Okay. Get, getting between the house and the, yeah. the natural area near yeah. the pond is a good place for mitigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything Happy else? Happy to meet you on site. When would you like to come back? I guess October 16th. So we would need um, October 16th the next, yep. Um, love a week, but I can stretch it to Thursday or Friday of next week, so. Maybe we should go to November 6th. Whatever works for everybody. <clears throat> That'll give us some time. Right. Yeah, it's just we need time to. So. November 6th? Yes, please. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I move that we continue the hearing for 14 Sequadron Road until November 6th. Second. Second by Jim Mullows. In favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Had some dialogue with them. The last one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next, we have a notice of intent for Zero Sequatum Road, proposal for storm damage repairs. They've requested a continuance until the next one or until the 16th. Um, I would say if they don't have something by then, we should do an indefinite continuance. The problem is, is the owner's out of the country a lot. I have heard that. Um, they took our comments seriously at the last meeting and they have contracted with a landscaper to come up with a plan to vegetate a little bit more of that slope. Um, so that's progress. Yeah. Um, so I'd recommend you grant them the continuance here, but if they can't meet it, I would just say they need to indefinitely continue until a time that they're ready to come back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there it is. Do we have a second? I second uh, it. Stand seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And that is it. For we apologize. We don't have minutes. We have a little bit problem with our audio in our, our computers. So next meeting. Okay. Wow, that actually wasn't as long as I thought. That was a lot of energy. So did we actually oh. adjourn? Um, yeah, we can, any yeah, other we business? can motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> well, I just want
mm -hmm. the uh, mosquito population over at the bogs on Bell's Neck. Yeah. Um, I know you've been in contact with mosquito control and so forth. Um, what are we doing as far as water flow goes over there to try to eliminate that? Because that's a that's a health concern as well. Um, they they contact Paul Elders contacted me, and we discussed it. And I said you should contact Heinz and Amy. Yeah. But I said that what he's proposing, which is a drop, you know, the the water level, and send it out to the river was suitable for what he was suggesting. But it, it's not up to me to unilaterally yeah. make that decision. So, right. So Heinz responded to go ahead. I had said, because he wasn't going to put the boards back in, I said, well, we're going to have to at some point. So I made sure that Heinz was going to get the boards to be put back in. But yes, he was going to essentially drain them because of the large amount of mosquito larvae that was in there. Um, which especially, I mean, we don't have it here in Harwich. We haven't had any positive pools, but between West Nile, Tripoli, and everything else. Um, People are thinking about I, it. Yeah, well, right, and there was a large um, population of larvae that mm -hmm. were in there. So. Yeah, it was huge. Do you think it was suitable the way he, it was conducted? Uh, yeah, I do, but uh, I think the water flow needs to continue and allow the water to pass through, not just dam it back up. If there's yeah. no movement, it's, it's just going to recreate. Here's the problem, and this is what I told you. You've got your River Herring juvenile population about to migrate out, probably migrating already. So to take out the boards up near that lagoon, mm -hmm. um, near the parking area, I think would be inappropriate. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to increase your water flow, but that would attract juvenile herring mm -hmm. into the box. Okay, you well, can't put screens Not for that small herring. We, we've got a screen up right now. On the outside, yeah. but if you really open up that flow, you're going to have fish. They're going to want to try. They're going to fly through there, and we've had problems in the past. So, I guess we should contact them and see if they feel like they got what they need with dropping the boards. They did. I'll call Paul in the morning. Well, these yeah. juvenile fish are going to follow the flow too. So as long as the water moves, that's ultimately going to take them where they're going. Yeah, but you know what happens? They get caught up. There's been mortality in the past. Well, when I'm sure there is, but the birds are having a feast at one end or the other. So. Well, I, I'm not here to protect the birds. <laughs> um, it, it's under the previous operations, it was a problem. And so I don't support um, opening up that particular flume um, unless there's some way to do it. You know, like have Heinz confirm there are no juveniles in the West Reservoir. Okay, open it up for, for 12 hours or something. But if you open it up for two days, you, you'll bring them in. Well, what I'm suggesting is a <clears throat> is a minor drawdown to have a steady flow. Yeah. Well, they, they, they've it's been a major drawdown, probably 16, 18 inches, mm -hmm. um, or already. But they haven't opened right. up the upper gates at all. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it, it's the wrong time to open up that particular gate. You know, early October. Mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of. You've got yeah, a million, a million frost fish before run. too yeah. long, and then, then that's the end of the mosquitoes. Anyway, right. So. Yeah, well, you, you could have just a tremendous number of juvenile herring. Um, so I think we, we should find out what, where he's at, how he feels about moving out larvae, and if it worked. Let me, let me call him in the morning and yeah. see what, what's going on. And um, <coughs> I talked to him the other day, and he was removing, you know, one board every yeah. Day or every couple of days, he was trying to draw it slow, but he had to get it out. Right. And, and, um, and let me see where he's at. About building it back up relatively soon because we it would be up to Heinz to do that because Paul said he was not putting them back in. Who, who's that? That. Hmm? Who's that? Paul Heinz is, just, it, Paul is from Mosquito Control. Mm -hmm. He was just going to take the boards, and I said, no, we got to get them to Heinz um, for our boards, and. Um, he said, well, I'm not responsible for putting the boards back in. So I said, we'll get them to Heinz. That, that could really create a, you know, large die-off of vegetation and everything right. else. But I, mean, I said, you can't shock the system. We were talking about shocking the system. You can't yeah. do that too quickly. Yeah. So I made sure Heinz is, evidently has the boards or is getting the boards. They so were just sitting on the, on the, you know, the sluice way as of uh, Monday. They were just sitting on top of it. He had removed three, I believe, of okay. the two by eights. 
I'll, I'll see what's going on. Sitting on there. But yeah, that that's, um, you know, would be troubling to draw it down permanently. Um, it's 11 acres of wetlands so that it would have a large impact on potentially quick pretty, impact. pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, a lot. I, I agree. And that, that, I don't think that helps anything when you're just dealing with small puddles and a bunch of rotten vegetation and dead, <laughs> dead organisms. Uh, no. All those organisms eat mosquitoes, and it, it's right. supposed to be a, a system. Right. It's maybe a little imbalanced right now, but it's uh, yep. on its way to being more balanced. I'll contact <coughs> Paul and see where he's at with that, and I'll see where Heinz is at, and we'll, okay. I'll let you know. I mean, we, we could... Mark, if you felt strongly about going one direction, you know, we, we could vote on it next meeting in two weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we could do that. I'll put management of the water levels in Bell's Neck Bogs on the agenda. Yep, I think that needs to be. Yeah, I, I so serious discussion. So if we're going to be making a vote, I would like to go over there and see it. I mean, maybe I should just go on my own. Go ahead. You have a chance that, you know, um, you know where, the, where you park in front of the fish ladder, there's yeah. a little lagoon opening where there's a net that was placed there. And that net is to discourage, it's really the mesh is to discourage larger fish from going there, but juveniles too. I'll uh, be yes. over there tomorrow, John. I'm taking our new AmeriCorps member on a tour, so if you have time tomorrow, Probably I could arrange not. it. It would be next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> what time are you going over there, Amy? Um, not exactly sure yet. Probably early afternoon. But the board. Probably early afternoon. Are further down. Oh, let me call the, if anybody's the interested. Of the fish oh, yeah. ladder, or or the or more the, south, south. The inlet is, is more the outlet south. is south. Yeah, the boards that have dropped the elevations down towards the outlet. Um, the boards that I favor not touching right now are the ones closest to the parking area for the fishway. That you know, if you take those boards down, you'll get a charge of water through there. Mm -hmm. But that's to the north of there that you're yeah. talking yeah. about. Yeah, just a little bit, like. Right. 50 feet or right. Feet yeah. or right. That that flume is. And, but where the boards were taken out, where are they relative? The down below the old pump house, I guess. All the way down. <sighs> the bog to the right, to the south, uh, as far around to the east as you can go. Towards the river, yeah, the south. But the south. river below the dam. Yes. 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 It dumps in the river below the dam. Yeah. So if you if you drive in. And on the right-hand side, you have those bogs. It's way around the back edge of that. So you're just talking about dropping the water elevation in the bogs themselves and drying that out. No. That's well, that's what mosquito control is doing. No, what I'm suggesting. Right, that's the concern you were talking about. No, because what he's doing is releasing water below the control right. that would draw water from the West, West Reservoir. Mm -hmm. So what he's doing is to address the overpopulation of mosquitoes, Mark's interested in getting more flushing flow in there. Right. Jim would like to see it not prolonged, kept low. I, I, and I, I share both those concerns. I think that they're good ideas, but I also worry about opening up the upper flume. Yeah, I get that. At this say, time of year, especially. Yeah, and say, you know, we, we could have just tens of millions, given we had a million adult fish. Yeah. So that's my concern. Some would certainly. Well, the, the other alternative is to replace some of the boards and. Right get it closer to the water level so you have a, a minor flow. It doesn't need to, be, need to be drastic, but it should be Yeah, it should yeah, be there, reasonably There stiff. generally is a minor flow, but we're overdue to pick out. revisit this issue and, oh, yeah. and, and just kind of nail down some <clears throat> management practices. Yep. You know, we are, it's one of those items that we kind of got away from, but it'd be nice to come back to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we need to get that on the board to have a serious conversation about Take some stuff doing something. Okay. Good point. Perhaps we could arrange to put that on the agenda sometime soon. I already I have it man, management of water levels in Bell's Neck Bogs on October sixteenth. Okay. I heard you just say that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's late. I, no, I, I have to remind somebody, myself it's a, it's a, things that I said. It was like another too. Monday. I mean, yeah. it just all day long felt like another Monday. Yep, it did. Okay, day. so next meeting doesn't look too bad, actually. We had one new filing come in, and then we had, I think we only had one continuance to that date this time. You know what I'd like to do at some point? We talked about, you know, these dock and pier regulations, and, and I have a real strong interest in um, extending 
you know, a longer setback, property to property, and yeah. also putting criteria on shellfish surveys. So I, I think we've, yep. we've discussed it in the past. But criteria on shellfish surveys could be a reg. Distance right. between docks might be like similar to what we have in Pleasant Bay. Bay and Cove, that was actually a bylaw. Right. So, so I'm um, very interested we'll, in that. We'll look into that. Yeah. Okay. You know, there, as as we were going through that meeting too, and I just googled what the impact of docks on shellfish habitat, and there are articles on the internet. Just you Google that alone. I've done that. <laughs> I don't know what you're finding. There was something in Orleans that said uh, prop wash, for example, will impact negatively impact shellfish habitat. You know what's missing is the quantitative studies. Yeah, I was looking Perhaps. for science. I was yeah. I was looking for the scientific research studies. That's yeah, what I was I think it'd be so nice if we could get a little bit away from that discussion and a little bit more into like there needs to be 150 feet between the docks. Right, it would make our lives. It would actually, regardless of the other issues, it would make our life. It would make everyone's life much easier if you just had. This is what it has to be. Navigation. Yeah. It uh, it would make it easier. Let me ask you one question. You take a situation where you're concerned about. Or Sacramento, look at all the, all the disturbance, and you know it has to be a matter of time before that takes place at Richmond Harbor. So, yeah, we just where's, did in the meantime, where's the protection factor? I'm not, I'm not sold on the value of protecting a little tiny portion when there's you're, you're facing ultimately a much bigger picture, and if there's an opportunity to reseed and bolster the population further down the line. I see some benefit to that. I understand your point. Yep. But I'm not sure I. Yeah. It, and I, I agree with you. If you look at the the layout of Wichmere Harbor, you've got on the eastern side, you've got functional intertidal and subtidal habitat right now, that hasn't been dredged recently under present regulations. Where the north side and the west side has the silty, mucky stuff, that probably should be dredged. Mm -hmm. But where this property is, where um, a, dre a dock was put in the other side of the commercial dock. That's functional shellfish habitat. I don't know how we can allow that under our present regs in the Wetlands Protection Act. And even, that would be improvement dredging? Care, just be careful because now it's a denial. Yeah. So um, a lot of discussion on, you, you haven't named a property, but right. any future discussion on that is going to have to be executive session. I agree. I agree. I, apologize. I just want but it, but I guess to get lo in trouble. Location's everything. Mm -hmm. Location is everything, and I think that's, that's the key with... Um, looking at these issues. If you have functional habitat, we, we probably should try to protect it, and it will probably be a hard sell to dredge it in the future. So it, it, it would, to the whole point, would be maybe on that next agenda, at least get a few minutes of discussion and on some possible changes. Because, uh, I mean, it would obviously be so nice for everybody not to get into the weeds of these yeah. intense shellfish, dis and, and yeah, I mean, it, it's just kind of, kind of ridiculous to, to me anyway. Um, I, I get the, the, I mean, the law is very simple. There's just no structures allowed in map shellfish habitat. It doesn't have to be significant. There's no other, that's a, it's a very simple regulation, but there's so much uh, resistance to it. Or, I, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think early on it was upheld when, when the reg came in. And yeah. Then, and then that faded away, and then all of a sudden people started to favor, you know, allowing it. and. But it, it was, you know, it's been contested. I mean, none of these were four or five old votes. Right. They've yeah. always been contested. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we probably shouldn't go too deep into that. Good point. Any other new business? Did you have a motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Nice job. That was a, quite an agenda.